Find rest as you listen to this peaceful bedtime story. For more Bible stories that bring you refreshing sleep, download the Abide app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Hello, and welcome to this Abide bedtime story. Tonight, we will meet Zacchaeus, a man hated by his fellow Jews in a way few people were hated in his day. He was not only a tax collector for the Roman government, he was the chief tax collector, the worst of the worst. And then he met Jesus, and everything changed. Isn't that true for all of us? Before we begin our story, I invite you to settle into your bed. Lay your head on your pillow and get really comfortable. Close your eyes and notice the noises around you. Acknowledge them. And then let them stay in the background. Take a few deep breaths to steady your heart and invite the Holy Spirit to rest upon you and give you peace tonight. You're at the end of your day. It's time to let God give you sweet rest. As you listen to Zacchaeus' story, Invite God to change you, to make you more and more like his son, Jesus. Continue slow and easy breathing as you listen to my voice. If you want, you can choose calming background music from the Abide app to play behind my voice. Let me pray as we begin. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and all that it held. And thank you that now I can find my rest in you physically and sleep. Thank you for loving me just as I am. But too much to want me to stay just as I am. Thank you for always wanting me to grow in love and grace, abounding in peace and joy. I invite you into my dreams tonight to remind me of how much you love me and the plans you have for me. Help me now to sleep deeply and peacefully. It's in Jesus name I pray. Amen. The place was Jericho in ancient Israel. The city that had fallen to the people of God by miraculous means. People marching around the city and blowing trumpets. Who ever heard of such a thing? And now, Jericho was a wealthy city, an oasis that boasted nice temperatures all year round. It was the place to be. Rich people had beautiful homes both in Jericho and Jerusalem. Traders had to pass through Jericho, and people reaped the benefit of the traffic through there. Well, some people reaped the benefits. Mostly, the rich reaped the benefits. The rich like Zacchaeus. Oh, Zacchaeus. He walked through the city with his chest puffed out like he owned the place, which he practically could with all the money he stole. Zacchaeus wasn't a thief, you understand, at least not officially. 
but in his job as the chief tax collector, he certainly took more than he was supposed to from his people. His people. Oh, how they hated Zacchaeus. When he walked by, people crossed to the other side of the street. You would have thought he had the dreaded disease leprosy. The way they treated him. Though he acted big, it made him feel very small. It was Zacchaeus' job to oversee the tax collectors in his area. He had bid well and received the position, thinking it would make him big and important. He wanted to feel big. He was longing to feel important. That wasn't the way he was feeling. He thought about Matthew, his co-worker up in Galilee. Matthew had left everything he had worked for to follow the rabbi Jesus. Zacchaeus wondered about that. He wanted to see this Jesus. He wanted to know what it was about him that caused Matthew to leave his lucrative job to follow him. And then it happened. He caught the murmurings around Jericho. Jesus was coming. This was his chance. Down the road, he saw a large group of people walking toward the center of the city. Oh, that must be him. But how was Zacchaeus going to get to him? People shoved him out of the way. As the group got closer, he tried to see through the crowd, but it was just too thick. No one would let him through. And then he spotted the sycamore fig tree. He wrinkled his nose a bit, knowing that the fruit of the tree was tasteless, knowing that only poor people ate the fruit of that tree. But it was handy, because the branches were so close to the ground. If he could just climb that tree, he would be able to see Jesus. He wasn't going to be eating the fruit, after all. Maybe he could hear what Jesus was saying to the group following him. So, glancing around to see if anybody noticed him, because what he was about to do wasn't very dignified, Zacchaeus hiked up his robe and ran to the sycamore fig tree and began to climb. Zacchaeus climbed until he was just far enough above the crowd that he could see beyond them. Some had noticed his climb and mocked him, laughing at his graceless ascent. But he didn't care. Something in his heart was stirring. Soon, he could see Jesus still surrounded by the crowd. But as the teacher came in range of where Zacchaeus perched, he stopped. He turned toward the tree with a smile on his face and looked up. Suddenly, Zacchaeus couldn't believe his ears as he heard Jesus' voice. Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. The crowd was stunned at these words. This was Zacchaeus. Didn't Jesus know who he was? He was the one responsible for taking more than half of what they earned to turn over to the despised Roman government. He was scum. He was garbage in their eyes. But Zacchaeus ignored all their murmurings. He scrambled down from his perch in the tree and joyfully led Jesus to his home. He heard the whispered words of the religious leaders. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. He glanced at Jesus. 
knowing that he would have heard the words as well all he received was a smile and so they ate and drank and laughed and Zacchaeus felt something change in him he felt as if his heart would burst unable to contain it any longer he leapt up from the table he turned to Jesus and declared behold Lord the half of my goods I give to the poor and if I have defrauded anyone of anything I restore it fourfold the murmuring of the others around the table grew even louder this was over and above what even the law required had Zacchaeus gone mad what was he thinking but Jesus smiled today he said salvation has come to this house since he also is a son of Abraham for the son of man came to seek and save the lost these words of Jesus were not lost on the gathered Jews suddenly they knew that something significant had happened no longer was Zacchaeus unclean and impure he was Zacchai pure righteous clean Zacchaeus's life was forever changed when he encountered Jesus scripture doesn't tell us what became of him after this meal he shared with the Lord but we can imagine that he did pay back all that he owed and though he kept his job he treated people as fairly as he could like the nation of Israel was blessed to be a blessing Zacchaeus would be a blessing to his people Genesis 12 1 through 3 says now the Lord said to Abram go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you and I will make of you a great nation and I will bless and make your name great so that you will be a blessing I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed Jesus changes everything Zacchaeus went from being a hated man to being a blessing nobody thought that was possible but all things are possible with God listen now to the words of Psalm 145 a Psalm of David imagine Zacchaeus singing these words in praise to God for his transformed life I will extol you my God and King and bless your name forever and ever every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable one generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate they shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds and I will declare your greatness they shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness 
and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless your name. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind. In all his works, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked you will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. I will close our time with prayer. Jesus, we exalt you tonight. I pray your blessing over your child tonight so that they may be a blessing to others. Remind them through the night that nothing is impossible with you. And if there is something or someone that they want to see transformed, that you are able to accomplish that transformation for your purposes. Please bring peace and rest to them tonight. Restore to them the joy of their salvation, that they may serve you all their days. I ask this for them in your precious, hallowed, holy name. Amen. As you know, getting a good night's sleep makes all the difference in your mental, physical, and emotional health. Sleep is crucial for processing the day's activities and restoring your tired body. If you've tried everything to fall asleep but still struggle, there is a quick two-minute technique that might be life-changing for you. This technique can help you fall asleep any time of the day or night, even in noisy environments. So, let this bedtime meditation lead you into peaceful slumber, all within God's presence. Take a few moments to declutter your mind by releasing all pressing thoughts to the Lord. Invite the Holy Spirit to be with you. Go ahead and whisper your prayer of invitation now. Make sure there are no distracting lights in the room and get comfortable.
Tonight, we will focus on this gentle technique, one that's been around for decades, to help you regulate your breathing, relax every muscle, and visualize a peaceful place, all within the presence of God. Now, pull the soft covers around you and sink your head into the pillow. It's time to hear from the scriptures and learn this two-minute technique to help you fall asleep quickly and gently. But first, let's pray. Lord Jesus, you know how I've struggled to fall asleep. Night after night, I toss and turn, longing for deep and peaceful rest. Tonight, I come before you in the stillness of this room and ask for your blessing of sleep. Lord, I surrender all my fears. I release all my worries. I seek your presence right here, right now. Thank you, Lord, for leading me to this sleep meditation, a bedtime meditation filled with your truth and your comfort. I ask that you help me fall asleep quickly and gently. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Now, focus your mind on total relaxation. Feel a sense of calm come over you. As you allow every muscle to loosen, starting with the muscles in your face, relax your forehead and your jaw. Moving down to your shoulders, gently roll them back, releasing the strain and tension. Let your arms rest at your side. Continue to breathe deeply, inhaling slowly and exhaling. Feel your chest relax as your breathing becomes steady. Experience a sense of ease and tranquility as relaxation moves throughout your entire body, your legs, your calves, your feet. In your mind's eye, picture the most serene place in the world. Maybe it's a quiet, sandy beach with warm, gentle waves washing over your feet. Wherever your place of serenity leads you, remain there for several moments. Sense the presence of God with you. As the prophet Isaiah writes, With my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me I will seek you. Let your heart's desire be the holy presence of God. By your spirit within you, seek him now. Again, release all tension from your forehead and jaw. Open your mouth slowly. Then close it. Feel all the muscles in your face completely relax. 
your shoulders are loose and your arms are resting comfortably at your side. Breathe slowly, steadily. As you inhale and exhale, be comforted as the Lord keeps you in perfect peace because you have fixed your mind on Him. Visualize the Lord building a refuge of peace and security around you tonight. Brick by brick, He lays the foundation, a foundation that will never be moved. As Psalm 61, verse 3 through 5 says, For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. For the first time in a long time, you are able to rest deeply, knowing you are sheltered in the refuge of God. Your whole body is relaxed. Your breathing is soft and steady. And your mind is resting on the Lord, your strong tower. As the Lord surrounds you with his fortress of protection, you are completely at ease. Finally, you are able to fall asleep quickly and gently. As you enter those first stages of sleep, drifting off peacefully, feeling perfectly content, your mind drifts to images of God's beautiful creation. Green rolling hills, a wide open meadow dotted with flowers, a gentle flowing stream of water, clear and refreshing. Soft grass beneath your feet, cushioning your toes. You remain here in the peace of God's creation, inhaling and exhaling. In your dream, you look up to see wispy clouds floating over the quiet meadow. You are lulled by the heavenly scene above you. Your focus is only on the creator of heaven and earth. Nothing troubles you as you allow the billowy clouds to pass by against the pale blue sky. We have waited for you. The desire of our soul is for your name and for the remembrance of you. 
With my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me I will seek you early. God loves you, dear one. As you have waited for him, he waits for you. In this quiet meditation, this holy moment, God is with you. His Holy Spirit helps you relax every muscle, every tendon. He causes you to breathe in a steady rhythm. He allows you to find peace in the presence of His holiness. Heavenly Father, thank you for showing this child how to fall asleep quickly and gently. You are their helper and their comforter. We praise you from the depth of our souls. We dream of pleasant places with you, hand in hand, step by step. With you, we want to remain. Thank you for your presence tonight. Father, let your angels surround this beloved child. Surround their home and guard that which they've committed to you. Be with them through every breath every minute and every hour of the night. In Jesus' name, amen. Sleep deeply in Christ Jesus, your fortress, your shield, and your strong tower. As you know, getting a good night's sleep makes all the difference in your mental, physical, and emotional health. Sleep is crucial for processing the day's activities and restoring your tired body. If you've tried everything to fall asleep but still struggle, there is a quick two-minute technique that might be life-changing for you. This technique can help you fall asleep any time of the day or night, even in noisy environments. So, let this bedtime meditation lead you into peaceful slumber, all within God's presence. Take a few moments to declutter your mind by releasing all pressing thoughts to the Lord. Invite the Holy Spirit to be with you. Go ahead and whisper your prayer of invitation now. Make sure there are no distracting lights in the room and get comfortable. Tonight, we will focus on this gentle technique, one that's been around for decades, to help you regulate your breathing 
Relax every muscle and visualize a peaceful place, all within the presence of God. Now, pull the soft covers around you and sink your head into the pillow. It's time to hear from the scriptures and learn this two-minute technique to help you fall asleep quickly and gently. But first, let's pray. Lord Jesus, you know how I've struggled to fall asleep. Night after night, I toss and turn, longing for deep and peaceful rest. Tonight, I come before you in the stillness of this room and ask for your blessing of sleep. Lord, I surrender all my fears. I release all my worries. I seek your presence right here, right now. Thank you, Lord, for leading me to this sleep meditation, a bedtime meditation filled with your truth and your comfort. I ask that you help me fall asleep quickly and gently. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Now, focus your mind on total relaxation. Feel a sense of calm come over you. As you allow every muscle to loosen. Starting with the muscles in your face, relax your forehead and your jaw. Moving down to your shoulders, gently roll them back, releasing the strain and tension. Let your arms rest at your side. Continue to breathe deeply, inhaling slowly and exhaling. Feel your chest relax as your breathing becomes steady. Experience a sense of ease and tranquility as relaxation moves throughout your entire body, your legs, your calves, your feet. In your mind's eye, picture the most serene place in the world. Maybe it's a quiet, sandy beach with warm, gentle waves washing over your feet. Wherever your place of serenity leads you, remain there for several moments. Sense the presence of God with you. As the prophet Isaiah writes, With my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me I will seek you. Let your heart's desire be the holy presence of God. By your spirit within you, seek him now. Again, release all tension from your forehead and jaw. Open your mouth slowly. Then close it. Feel all the muscles in your face completely relax. Your shoulders are loose and your arms are resting comfortably at your side. 
Breathe slowly, steadily. As you inhale and exhale, be comforted as the Lord keeps you in perfect peace because you have fixed your mind on Him. Visualize the Lord building a refuge of peace and security around you tonight. Brick by brick, He lays the foundation, a foundation that will never be moved. As Psalm 61, verse 3 through 5 says, For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. For the first time in a long time, you are able to rest deeply, knowing you are sheltered in the refuge of God. Your whole body is relaxed. Your breathing is soft and steady. And your mind is resting on the Lord, your strong tower. As the Lord surrounds you with his fortress of protection, you are completely at ease. Finally, you are able to fall asleep quickly and gently. As you enter those first stages of sleep, drifting off peacefully, feeling perfectly content, your mind drifts to images of God's beautiful creation. Green rolling hills, a wide open meadow dotted with flowers, a gentle flowing stream of water, clear and refreshing. Soft grass beneath your feet, cushioning your toes. You remain here in the peace of God's creation, inhaling and exhaling. In your dream, you look up to see wispy clouds floating over the quiet meadow. You are lulled by the heavenly scene above you. Your focus is only on the creator of heaven and earth. Nothing troubles you as you allow the billowy clouds to pass by against the pale blue sky. O oh Lord, we have waited for you. The desire of our soul is for your name and for the remembrance of you. With my soul, I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me, 
I will seek you early. God loves you, dear one. As you have waited for him, he waits for you. In this quiet meditation, this holy moment, God is with you. His Holy Spirit helps you relax every muscle, every tendon. He causes you to breathe in a steady rhythm. He allows you to find peace in the presence of His holiness. Heavenly Father, thank you for showing this child how to fall asleep quickly and gently. You are their helper and their comforter. We praise you from the depth of our souls. We dream of pleasant places with you, hand in hand, step by step. With you, we want to remain. Thank you for your presence tonight. Father, let your angels surround this beloved child. Surround their home and guard that which they've committed to you. Be with them through every breath every minute and every hour of the night in jesus name amen sleep deeply in christ jesus your fortress your shield and your strong tower Tonight, I encourage you to remove all distractions from the room. Turn off all electronics. Dim the lights. And get settled into bed. Make yourself comfortable. Settle your head onto the pillow and pull the soft covers around you take a few deep breaths in and out feel your muscles relax from head to toe as you inhale and exhale now invite the Holy Spirit to be with you tonight above all else his presence is what you need most to find peace and rest just knowing he is covering you protecting you and calming you is enough to help you sleep soundly tonight 
take this moment to rest quietly in the Lord's presence now let's pray holy God it is your presence we seek tonight above all other comforts we ask for the covering of your peace please bless your beloved child with quietness and rest help them release all worried thoughts and concerns to you steady their breathing into a soft rhythm with each breath help them remember you the one who guards them and protects them as they sleep thank you Lord for anointing your child with your presence and it is in the precious name of your son that I pray amen If you've ever heard the word anointed before it may have been in the sense that God anointed certain people to be set apart to serve him in fact Jesus himself talked about anointing in Luke chapter 4 when he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor the anointing of the Lord is precious and purposeful settle your mind on God's anointing for several moments in the Old Testament Moses was given a recipe for the holy anointing oil the Lord told him in Exodus chapter 30 to take the finest spices of myrrh sweet smelling cinnamon aromatic calamus cassia and olive oil these were valuable spices that the Lord called Moses to gather he wanted only the finest ingredients for his holy anointing oil the purest of myrrh also called the myrrh of freedom in Hebrew sweet smelling cinnamon a rare spice that was much valued in that region aromatic calamus from the reed of a plant that grew close to the water God was specific about choosing the finest spices and from these spices Moses was commanded to make a holy anointing oil an ointment blended according to the art of the perfumer to be used as an oil of consecration inhale the sweet smelling aroma of the holy anointing oil as it fills the room this holy oil was used to consecrate the tabernacle of meeting the ark of the testimony and the altar of incense in order to make them holy for the service of the Lord and not only that Aaron and his sons were anointed with oil to be sanctified as priests unto the Lord that they might minister before him all of their days this holy anointing was a symbol of being set apart for God set 
apart. Let those words sink in for several moments. Now, please hear this prayer of anointing. Holy God, we come humbly before you, seeking the anointing of your presence. We long to be set apart for you. In all things, Lord, we offer ourselves in humble surrender. For in you we live and move and have our being. Please cover us with the sweet fragrance of your holy anointing oil tonight. Settle our hearts and minds in the presence of your love and grace. We seek true rest in you tonight. Deep, peaceful, uninterrupted sleep. In the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In Psalm 45, a psalm of love and declaration, we read these words about God's anointing over his Son. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions all your garments are scented with myrrh and aloe and cassia out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad therefore God your God has anointed you Rest in the holiness of these words for several moments. All your garments are scented with myrrh and aloe and cassia. The scent of his garments were covered in the holy fragrance of God's anointing oil. Each strand of Jesus's sacrifice was woven into place by the good pleasing and perfect will of the Father just as a person weaves beautiful tapestry ensuring that each thread appears in its proper place God the Father wove his perfect plan through the life of his son so that we could live for eternity with him allow the tapestry of God's love and grace to secure you in his peace tonight God has anointed you with the oil of gladness joy and contentment fill the room the anointing oil of gladness rests on you like a comforting blanket all worries fade away they are replaced with God's perfect peace oh how good it is to abide in the peace of God's holy anointing abide here now in the oil of gladness for several moments this beautiful passage in Psalm 45 describes the Lord Jesus as the anointed one your throne O God is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. The security of knowing that God is on his throne 
allows us to rest assured that he is in control over everything that concerns us he reigns above every earthly kingdom God rules let the eternal comfort of God's sovereignty settle deep in your heart for several moments we continue to hear about the precious anointing of Jesus as the psalmist writes you are fairer than the sons of men grace is poured upon your lips therefore God has blessed you forever gird your sword upon your thigh O mighty one with your glory and your majesty and in your majesty ride prosperously because of truth humility and righteousness fairer than the sons of men grace poured upon your lips with glory and majesty because of truth humility and righteousness rest in those beautiful descriptions of the Lord Jesus grace was poured upon the lips of Jesus that he would in turn bestow his grace on us oh what mercy what grace and what forgiveness we cannot comprehend the depths of his love for us for you even the deepest part of the sea is not deep enough to hold the grandeur of God's love for us for all eternity we will draw upon the waters of the Savior's love and drink deeply from the well that never runs dry hear the continual flow of living water flowing from the throne of God's grace dear one Jesus was anointed to bear our sin and shame he fixed his eyes on the cross out of his unwavering love and mercy over us his ultimate sacrifice is the foundation of our holy anointing by his grace through faith we are saved not by our own works but by the gracious gift of the Father breathe deeply a breath of thankfulness to the God who saves Jesus our Savior holy and anointed one anointed with grace anointed with glory anointed with majesty our God reigns forever and ever rest in his glory tonight Oh Lord our Lord how majestic is your name in all the earth we praise you for you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords there is no one like you in your righteousness you reign forever and ever and in that truth we find peace by your anointing we are yours you are true to your word and you never fail us you lead us in truth and righteousness thank you God we praise you in the name of Jesus my friend as you drift off to sleep 
in the peaceful presence of the Lord there is yet another anointing I would like to remind you of it is far greater than the fragrant oil poured out in the tabernacle it is the everlasting anointing of the Holy Spirit of God for the word says it is God who establishes you in Christ and has anointed you he has also put his seal on you and given you his spirit in your heart as a guarantee his spirit is in your heart as a guarantee settle your heart and mind on the Holy Spirit tonight this beautiful anointing by the Holy Spirit is not to be taken lightly this anointing is the very hand of God on our lives the very same Spirit who raised Jesus dwells in us God has anointed us sealed us and inscribed on our hearts the guarantee that we will be with him forever God's promises are immovable unchangeable and unfathomable he has put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee breathe deeply in that unchangeable immovable blessing right now therefore God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions all your garments are scented with myrrh and aloe and cassia out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad with the sweet smelling aroma of God's holy anointing oil surrounding you with peace breathe softly in and out take in the fragrance of myrrh cinnamon and cassia as a soothing balm of peace and gladness God is with you he loves you he covers you with his presence most holy God we receive your anointing hand upon us tonight we rest in the presence of your Holy Spirit in the stillness of the room we breathe in the fragrance of your love you are holy and just we abide in your holiness now hushed and settled for you alone lead us to safe and quiet places thank you father thank you for your anointing over us by the seal of your spirit on our hearts in Jesus name amen now hear the melodious words of these lyrics from the worship song holy and anointed one let them wash over you with comfort and peace Jesus Jesus holy and anointed one Jesus Jesus risen and exalted one your name 
is like honey on my lips your spirit like water to my soul your word is a lamp unto my feet Jesus I love you I love you Jesus Jesus holy and anointed one rest in perfect peace under the anointing of Jesus the holy and anointed one feel the hand of the Father as he pours his oil of consecration over your life you are set apart for him you are sealed by his spirit for all eternity rest in that truth remain in his presence receive his anointing Heavenly Father we bow before you tonight before your throne in humble adoration we remain here in your presence there's no place we'd rather be father we want nothing more than to be set apart for you to walk in your ways and to honor you thank you good father for anointing your precious child with sleep tonight in your presence they are comforted and loved as you stand watch over them in the night watches they can sleep soundly knowing that you are with them thank you for covering them with your spirit they will sleep peacefully in your presence dreaming of your fragrant anointing oil making them clean whole and set apart for you in Jesus name I pray amen if you've ever heard the word anointed before it may have been in the sense that God anointed certain people to be set apart to serve him in fact Jesus himself talked about anointing in Luke chapter 4 when he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor the anointing of the Lord is precious and purposeful settle your mind on God's anointing for several moments in the Old Testament Moses was given a recipe for the holy anointing oil the Lord told him in Exodus chapter 30 to take the finest spices of myrrh sweet smelling cinnamon aromatic calamus cassia and olive oil these were valuable spices that the Lord called Moses to gather he wanted only the finest ingredients for his holy anointing oil the purest of myrrh also called the myrrh of freedom in Hebrew sweet smelling cinnamon a rare spice that was much valued in that region aromatic calamus from the reed of a plant that grew close to the water God was specific about choosing the finest spices and from these spices Moses was commanded to make a holy anointing oil an ointment blended according to the art of the perfumer to be used as an oil of consecration 
inhale the sweet smelling aroma of the holy anointing oil as it fills the room this holy oil was used to consecrate the tabernacle of meeting the ark of the testimony and the altar of incense in order to make them holy for the service of the Lord not only that Aaron and his sons were anointed with oil to be sanctified as priests unto the Lord that they might minister before him all of their days this holy anointing was a symbol of being set apart for God set apart let those words sink in for several moments now please hear this prayer of anointing holy God we come humbly before you seeking the anointing of your presence we long to be set apart for you in all things Lord we offer ourselves in humble surrender for in you we live and move and have our being please cover us with the sweet fragrance of your holy anointing oil tonight settle our hearts and minds in the presence of your love and grace we seek true rest in you tonight deep peaceful uninterrupted sleep in the mighty name of your son Jesus we pray amen in Psalm 45 a psalm of love and declaration we read these words about God's anointing over his son therefore God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions all your garments are scented with myrrh and aloe and cassia out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad therefore God your God has anointed you rest in the holiness of these words for several moments all your garments are scented with myrrh and aloe and cassia the scent of his garments were covered in the holy fragrance of God's anointing oil each strand of Jesus's sacrifice was woven into place by the good pleasing and perfect will of the Father just as a person weaves beautiful tapestry ensuring that each thread appears in its proper place God the Father wove his perfect plan through the life of his son so that we could live for eternity with him allow the tapestry of God's love and grace to secure you in his peace tonight God has anointed you with the oil of gladness joy and contentment fill the room the anointing oil of gladness rests on you like a comforting blanket all worries fade away they are replaced with God's perfect peace 
Oh, how good it is to abide in the peace of God's holy anointing. Abide here now in the oil of gladness for several moments. This beautiful passage in Psalm 45 describes the Lord Jesus as the anointed one. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The security of knowing that God is on his throne allows us to rest assured that he is in control over everything that concerns us he reigns above every earthly kingdom God rules let the eternal comfort of God's sovereignty settle deep in your heart for several moments We continue to hear about the precious anointing of Jesus as the psalmist writes, You are fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword upon your thigh, O mighty one, with your glory and your majesty. And in your majesty ride prosperously because of truth humility and righteousness fairer than the sons of men grace poured upon your lips with glory and majesty because of truth humility and righteousness rest in those beautiful descriptions of the Lord Jesus grace was poured upon the lips of Jesus that he would in turn bestow his grace on us oh what mercy what grace and what forgiveness we cannot comprehend the depths of his love for us for you even the deepest part of the sea is not deep enough to hold the grandeur of God's love for us for all eternity we will draw upon the waters of the Savior's love and drink deeply from the well that never runs dry hear the continual flow of living water flowing from the throne of God's grace dear one Jesus was anointed to bear our sin and shame he fixed his eyes on the cross out of his unwavering love and mercy over us his ultimate sacrifice is the foundation of our holy anointing by his grace through faith we are saved not by our own works but by the gracious gift of the father breathe deeply a breath of thankfulness to the God who saves Jesus our Savior holy and anointed one anointed with grace anointed with glory anointed with majesty our God reigns forever and ever rest in his glory tonight Oh Lord our Lord how majestic 
is your name in all the earth we praise you for you are king of kings and lord of lords there is no one like you in your righteousness you reign forever and ever and in that truth we find peace by your anointing we are yours you are true to your word and you never fail us you lead us in truth and righteousness thank you God we praise you in the name of Jesus my friend as you drift off to sleep in the peaceful presence of the Lord there is yet another anointing I would like to remind you of it is far greater than the fragrant oil poured out in the tabernacle it is the everlasting anointing of the Holy Spirit of God for the word says it is God who establishes you in Christ and has anointed you he has also put his seal on you and given you his spirit in your heart as a guarantee his spirit is in your heart as a guarantee settle your heart and mind on the Holy Spirit tonight this beautiful anointing by the Holy Spirit is not to be taken lightly this anointing is the very hand of God on our lives the very same Spirit who raised Jesus dwells in us God has anointed us sealed us and inscribed on our hearts the guarantee that we will be with him forever God's promises are immovable unchangeable and unfathomable he has put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee breathe deeply in that unchangeable immovable blessing right now therefore God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions all your garments are scented with myrrh and aloe and cassia out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad with the sweet smelling aroma of God's holy anointing oil surrounding you with peace breathe softly in and out take in the fragrance of myrrh cinnamon and cassia as a soothing balm of peace and gladness God is with you he loves you he covers you with his presence most holy God we receive your anointing hand upon us tonight we rest in the presence of your Holy Spirit in the stillness of the room we breathe in the fragrance of your love you are holy and just we abide in your holiness now hushed and settled for you alone lead us to safe and quiet places 
Thank you, Father. Thank you for your anointing over us. By the seal of your Spirit on our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, hear the melodious words of these lyrics from the worship song, Holy and Anointed One. Let them wash over you with comfort and peace. Jesus, Jesus, Holy and Anointed One, Jesus, Jesus, Risen and Exalted One, your name is like honey on my lips, your spirit like water to my soul, your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, Jesus, holy and anointed one. Rest in perfect peace under the anointing of Jesus, the holy and anointed one. Feel the hand of the Father as he pours his oil of consecration over your life. You are set apart for him. You are sealed by his spirit for all eternity. Rest in that truth. Remain in his presence. Receive his anointing. Heavenly Father, we bow before you tonight, before your throne, in humble adoration. We remain here in your presence. There's no place we'd rather be. Father, we want nothing more than to be set apart for you, to walk in your ways and to honor you. Thank you, good Father, for anointing your precious child with sleep tonight. In your presence, they are comforted and loved. As you stand, watch over them in the night watches. They can sleep soundly, knowing that you are with them. Thank you for covering them with your spirit they will sleep peacefully in your presence dreaming of your fragrant anointing oil making them clean whole and set apart for you in Jesus name I pray amen as you lay down to sleep tonight we want your spirit to find rest and peace by listening to stories that come from pictures and stories that we find in God's Word. Do you feel restless? Do you feel unsettled? Are you longing for peace? Tonight, you will hear words from the Apostle Paul that beckon your heart to find peace, rest, and comfort you will be reminded that Christ has made a way for you to find everlasting peace. You will be invited to rest in that peace tonight as you sleep. As you lay down, find a comfortable position. No matter what this day held, it has come to a close, and God invites you to release it and enter into the blessed rest that he gives his beloved as you sleep let your shoulders relax with your eyes closed release any pressure that's tensing you up and prepare to sleep take a slow deep breath holding it for a moment before exhaling slowly take another deep breath 
Let the pressures, weights, and uncertainties that you are worried about fall away tonight. Your Heavenly Father invites you to rest as you sleep. Father God, thank you for protecting your child through another day. As they lay down to sleep, I ask that you would lead them to the peace and rest that comes from knowing you and being in your presence. Be near to your child tonight, Jesus. Let the words that come from your holy scriptures lead them to sleep in peace and wake in joy. We look to you for our hope. You are our everlasting peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Children have the most wonderful imagination. When they play, their whole world transforms. To them, any item or location can morph in an instant, simply because the child's mind decided it was time to have an adventure. Maybe the days of careless play seem miles away from where you currently find yourself. Often, children will play castle, with kings and queens, or maybe even a court jester. Their backyard transforms, and with all the power of a monarch, they rule over an imaginary world. Maybe you wish you could go back to the days where the only thing you had to worry about was having enough time to play creatively in this way. It can be easy sometimes to wish that life were as simple as it was back then, when you could just imagine something and suddenly the world around you changed. Things are surely different now, but maybe the invitation remains to imagine and see the world around you change. What if God's invitation to you, through His Word, was even more profound than your wildest childlike imagination? that you could find something more than a temporary, whimsical escape from the world around you and find a more lasting mindset change. In his letters to the Colossian church, the Apostle Paul writes, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Imagine approaching the most majestic castle you have seen it from a distance, but finally, you have the opportunity to experience whatever might be inside. You slowly walk up to the gate, only to find the guards have been expecting you. They open the massive brass gate, and you walk through. You're no longer on a normal sidewalk. The ground beneath you has changed to an intricate brick design. Feel the freedom of acceptance as you walk toward the front doors. Notice the array of flowers and the perfectly manicured bushes. Lean in to smell the roses. Admire the variety of blues, yellows, whites, and reds filling the flower bed. Walk closer to the front door, preparing to enter and finally see what's inside. As you reach the door, you encounter more guards, but they too seem to be expecting you. Notice the ornate design of the front doors, taller than any you've seen before. Open the door and walk through to find a still more majestic entry. Look up to see the height of the ceilings. Notice the extravagance of the staircases one to the right and one to the left. 
you've entered a place with a monarch, a king or queen that rules over the space and all the space outside of it. But the ruler isn't what you imagined. It isn't a person. It's peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. For peace to rule means that peace leads the conversation. Peace initiates. Peace responds. Peace makes the decisions. Peace has the final word. Christ gives you the invitation to surrender to peace. Lay down your anger and let peace rule. Let go of your bitterness and let peace rule. Stop striving and let peace rule. You belong in a palace of peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. The invitation of Jesus is not simply to let peace have the final say. It is, through thankfulness, to let the word of Christ dwell among you richly. Letting peace have the final say changes what happens in the palace of your life. Letting the word of Christ dwell among you is to fill the room with truth tellers and promise keepers. To dwell is to remain, to live, to stay in a space. Run to the richness of the word of Christ and you will find balm for your weary soul. You will find truth flowing from the heart of God. You will find the promises of Jesus spoken of old and preserved for us in the Holy Scriptures. Though we long for the goodness of God, most spaces are filled not with truth or truth tellers. Instead of letting outside lesser voices have the loudest voice, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Wander deeper into the palace. Turn the corner to find another majestic great room. Admire the colors woven into the rug. Deep greens, gold, and soft reds. Smell the incense burning, permeating every room. Look at the curtains, perfectly hung and pulled back to the side. Draw closer to the window and look outside at the luscious green grass and the bright blue sky. Imagine you turn the corner and find a grand piano positioned perfectly in the great room. Listen as the words of Christ that dwell among you turn to songs of blessing sung throughout the palace. Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Walk back to the front room and wander up the stairs. Listen to the sound of your feet on the tile as you ascend the stairs. Wander into each and every room you find each more elaborate than the last. Imagine you have filled these rooms with truth tellers, truth dwelling among you, peace reigning around you, truth to guide you, peace to sustain you. This is the invitation of Christ. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. We are all longing for peace. We are looking for it in so many different places, desperate to see this peace reign over our families, workplaces, relationships, and the world. 
we are longing for the truth of the word of Christ to dwell among us. The beauty is found in the promise given to you as you walk with Jesus. Choose to lean on the peace that comes from Him. As you fall asleep tonight and as you wake in the morning to begin a new day, choose peace. Remember the message of Jesus and let that dwell in your mind and heart instead. Heavenly Father, I ask again that your peace would permeate tonight as your beloved sleeps. You are our hope of peace in a broken and hurting world, and we look to you. Bless your child tonight. May your message dwell richly in them, leading them to delight and rest in your promises. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Find peace tonight as you rest in the loving arms of the God who delights to bless you, care for you, and lead you. Sleep well tonight, and may you wake to know the Lord's love for you deeper and deeper. As you lay down to sleep tonight, we want your spirit to find rest and peace by listening to stories that come from pictures and stories that we find in God's Word. Do you feel restless? Do you feel unsettled? Are you longing for peace? Tonight, you will hear words from the Apostle Paul that beckon your heart to find peace, rest, and comfort you will be reminded that Christ has made a way for you to find everlasting peace. You will be invited to rest in that peace tonight as you sleep. As you lay down, find a comfortable position. No matter what this day held, it has come to a close, and God invites you to release it and enter into the blessed rest that He gives His beloved as you sleep. Let your shoulders relax. With your eyes closed, release any pressure that's tensing you up and prepare to sleep. Take a slow, deep breath, holding it for a moment before exhaling slowly. Take another deep breath. Let the pressures, weights, and uncertainties that you are worried about fall away tonight. Your Heavenly Father invites you to rest as you sleep. Father God, thank you for protecting your child through another day. As they lay down to sleep, I ask that you would lead them to the peace and rest that comes from knowing you and being in your presence. Be near to your child tonight, Jesus. Let the words that come from your holy scriptures lead them to sleep in peace and wake in joy. We look to you for our hope. You are our everlasting peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Children have the most wonderful imagination. When they play, their whole world transforms. To them, any item or location can morph in an instant, simply because the child's mind decided it was time to have an adventure. Maybe the days of careless play seem miles away from where you currently find yourself. Often, children will play castle, with kings and queens, or maybe even a court jester. Their backyard transforms, and with all the power of a monarch, they rule over an imaginary world. Maybe you wish you could go back to the days where the only thing you had to worry about was having enough time to play creatively in this way. 
It can be easy sometimes to wish that life were as simple as it was back then, when you could just imagine something and suddenly the world around you changed. Things are surely different now, but maybe the invitation remains to imagine and see the world around you change. What if God's invitation to you, through his word, was even more profound than your wildest childlike imagination? That you could find something more than a temporary, whimsical escape from the world around you and find a more lasting mindset change. In his letters to the Colossian church, the Apostle Paul writes, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Imagine approaching the most majestic castle. You have seen it from a distance, but finally you have the opportunity to experience whatever might be inside. You slowly walk up to the gate, only to find the guards have been expecting you. They open the massive brass gate, and you walk through. You're no longer on a normal sidewalk. The ground beneath you has changed to an intricate brick design. Feel the freedom of acceptance as you walk toward the front doors. Notice the array of flowers and the perfectly manicured bushes. Lean in to smell the roses. Admire the variety of blues, yellows, whites, and reds filling the flower bed. Walk closer to the front door, preparing to enter and finally see what's inside. As you reach the door, you encounter more guards, but they too seem to be expecting you. Notice the ornate design of the front doors, taller than any you've seen before. Open the door and walk through to find a still more majestic entry. Look up to see the height of the ceilings. Notice the extravagance of the staircases, one to the right and one to the left. You've entered a place with a monarch, a king or queen that rules over the space and all the space outside of it. But the ruler isn't what you imagined. It isn't a person. It's peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. For peace to rule means that peace leads the conversation. Peace initiates. Peace responds. Peace makes the decisions. Peace has the final word. Christ gives you the invitation to surrender to peace. Lay down your anger and let peace rule. Let go of your bitterness and let peace rule. Stop striving and let peace rule. You belong in a palace of peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. The invitation of Jesus is not simply to let peace have the final say. It is, through thankfulness, to let the word of Christ dwell among you richly. Letting peace have the final say changes what happens in the palace of your life. Letting the word of Christ dwell among you is to fill the room with truth-tellers and promise-keepers. To dwell is to remain, to live, to stay in a space. Run to the richness of the word of Christ, and you will find balm for your weary soul. You will find truth flowing from the heart of God. 
you will find the promises of Jesus spoken of old and preserved for us in the Holy Scriptures. Though we long for the goodness of God, most spaces are filled not with truth or truth-tellers. Instead of letting outside, lesser voices have the loudest voice. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Wander deeper into the palace. Turn the corner to find another majestic great room. Admire the colors woven into the rug. Deep greens, gold, and soft reds. Smell the incense burning, permeating every room. Look at the curtains, perfectly hung and pulled back to the side. Draw closer to the window and look outside at the luscious green grass and the bright blue sky. Imagine you turn the corner and find a grand piano positioned perfectly in the great room. Listen as the words of Christ that dwell among you turn to songs of blessing sung throughout the palace. Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Walk back to the front room and wander up the stairs. Listen to the sound of your feet on the tile as you ascend the stairs. Wander into each and every room you find, each more elaborate than the last. Imagine you have filled these rooms with truth-tellers, truth dwelling among you, peace reigning around you, truth to guide you, peace to sustain you. This is the invitation of Christ. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. We are all longing for peace. We are looking for it in so many different places, desperate to see this peace reign over our families, workplaces, relationships, and the world. We are longing for the truth of the word of Christ to dwell among us. The beauty is found in the promise given to you as you walk with Jesus. Choose to lean on the peace that comes from him. As you fall asleep tonight and as you wake in the morning to begin a new day, choose peace. Remember the message of Jesus and let that dwell in your mind and heart instead. Heavenly Father, I ask again that your peace would permeate tonight as your beloved sleeps. You are our hope of peace in a broken and hurting world, and we look to you. Bless your child tonight. May your message dwell richly in them leading them to delight and rest in your promises. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Find peace tonight as you rest in the loving arms of the God who delights to bless you, care for you, and lead you. Sleep well tonight, and may you wake to know the Lord's love for you deeper and deeper. I am going to tell you a story tonight of a mother, a boy, and a prophet of the Lord. As you lie down on your bed, get as comfortable as possible. This is a true tale that will still your soul and encourage you. 
close your eyes breathe in deeply hold it for a few seconds and release that breath as you do this feel your body relax and ready itself for a restful night's sleep keep breathing slowly and deeply as you picture a woman Hannah on her knees tears flowing down her cheeks as she cries out to God over her lack of children she doesn't know why God has forsaken her her husband's other wife has children and she torments Hannah day and night Hannah is heartbroken as she prostrates herself before the Lord the prophet Eli confronts her why are you drunk put away your wine no my Lord I am not drunk I am pouring out my heart to the Lord Hannah replies in a broken voice Eli then recognizes her anguish and prays a blessing on her may the Lord grant you what you desire Hannah returns home and in time great rejoicing fills her heart it's true the Lord has remembered me and she is going to bear a child she recalls her words at the temple if you will give me a son he will be yours all the days of his life time passes Hannah bears a son and she names him Samuel because she said I have asked for him from the Lord after the child is weaned Hannah is true to her word she takes Samuel to Eli the prophet after praying a prayer exalting the Lord for his mighty deeds and his power Hannah leaves Samuel with Eli for as long as he lives she says he is lent to the Lord and now imagine the young Samuel lying in his bed as you are tired from a day's work in the temple serving Eli serving the Lord he is tired he is very young and does not yet know the voice of the Lord he has heard Eli speak of such things but he does not know what it means he closes his eyes missing his mother but knowing that he is in a special place that she has dedicated him to this work for the Lord lying still on his bed Samuel hears all the creaks of the house now it is familiar to him since he has been here nearly his whole life he is not afraid he is peaceful suddenly he hears his name Samuel his eyes fly open here I am he calls he immediately gets up and goes to Eli here I am for you called me Eli awakened from a sound sleep turns towards Samuel's voice for his eyes are so dim now that he can only see the shadow of Samuel's form in the light of the Lord's lamp I did not call you he says go lie down again confused but thinking maybe it had been a dream Samuel returns to his bed and lies down again closing his eyes he breathes deeply quieting his heart from its racing a few moments before 
a few minutes pass when he again hears his name. Samuel. Here I am, he answers again and jumps up to go to Eli. Here I am, for you called me? Samuel says again. I did not call you, my son. Lie down again, Eli answers him, a little perturbed at having once again being awakened. Samuel, a little more confused, sure that he had heard his name, walks slowly back toward his bed. Was Eli playing a joke on him? Well, the old man didn't usually have much of a sense of humor. But Eli was sure it was no dream. He had not yet been sleeping. Soon, a third time, Samuel hears a voice. Samuel! On a weary and wary of approaching Eli a third time, Samuel still goes to his mentor and says, Here I am, for you called me. Eli is silent for a moment, and then realizes what must be happening. It must be the Lord calling to Samuel. He had been waiting for this moment. He knew it would come. He knew what to do. Taking Samuel's hand, he instructs him, Go, <laughs> lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. A little afraid <laughs> and a little excited, Samuel returns to his bed, repeating to himself the words Eli had told him. He waits, listening with all his might, until his eyes are too heavy to hold open any longer. And then, he hears it. Samuel, Samuel. His heart jumps, but he remembers the words Eli has instructed him to say. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. And suddenly... He hears softly but clearly the voice of the Lord. His heart leaps. His vision clouds. And all around him is this beautiful, terrifying voice. He can feel it resonating in his chest. He listens, not only with his ears, but with his very soul. The words he is given by the Lord are awesome and sad and weighty. He doesn't want to repeat them to Eli because they are a judgment on him. But he knows he must. He has been given a task by the Lord. And he can do nothing but tell all that he has been given to say. And when the next morning, he tells Eli all. Though his heart is sad, it is full. And from that day on, he always spoke what the Lord gave him to say. And Samuel grew. And the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. As you drift to sleep tonight, Listen for the Lord's voice. He is calling you. Can you hear him? Are you ready to say, along with Samuel, Here I am, for you called me. God has placed a call on your life. That's a magnificent and awesome thing you can rest because you know that you are in the care of the Lord he will not let you fail Philippians 1 6 tells us and I am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ 
Keep breathing deeply. Inhaling God's call. Exhaling doubt, insecurity, fear. Inhale peace. Knowing that you are uniquely placed to do what God is calling you to do. Exhale anxiety, control, questions. Here I am, Lord. You called me. Repeat that again. Here I am, Lord. You called me. Let him guide you and enable you and work through you as you surrender your will to his. Like Samuel, you are dedicated to the Lord. He loves you. He has called you. You are his. Sleep deeply and peacefully because you are safe in that truth. Let me pray over you as you sleep. Sovereign God, thank you for the call you have placed on my life. Help me to lean into and live that call with all my heart. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for making me yours. I acknowledge my moment by moment need for you. Thank you for never leaving me or forsaking me. I surrender my selfish desires to you, knowing that you are my loving Father. Amen. This is a true tale that will still your soul and encourage you. Close your eyes. Breathe in deeply. Hold it for a few seconds and release that breath. As you do this, feel your body relax and ready itself for a restful night's sleep. Keep breathing slowly and deeply as you picture a woman, Hannah, on her knees, tears flowing down her cheeks as she cries out to God over her lack of children. She doesn't know why God has forsaken her. Her husband's other wife has children and she torments Hannah day and night. Hannah is heartbroken as she prostrates herself before the Lord. The prophet Eli confronts her. Why are you drunk? Put away your wine. No, my Lord, I am not drunk. I am pouring out my heart to the Lord, Hannah replies in a broken voice. Eli then recognizes her anguish and prays a blessing on her. May the Lord grant you what you desire. Hannah returns home and in time, great rejoicing fills her heart. It's true. The Lord has remembered me and she is going to bear a child. She recalls her words at the temple. If you will give me a son, he will be yours all the days of his life. Time passes. Hannah bears a son and she names him Samuel because she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. After the child is weaned, Hannah is true to her word. 
she takes Samuel to Eli the prophet. After praying a prayer, exalting the Lord for his mighty deeds and his power, Hannah leaves Samuel with Eli. For as long as he lives, she says, he is lent to the Lord. And now, imagine the young Samuel lying in his bed as you are, tired from a day's work in the temple, serving Eli, serving the Lord. He is tired. He is very young and does not yet know the voice of the Lord. He has heard Eli speak of such things, but he does not know what it means. He closes his eyes, missing his mother, but knowing that he is in a special place, that she has dedicated him to this work for the Lord. Lying still on his bed, Samuel hears all the creaks of the house. Now it is familiar to him, since he has been here nearly his whole life. He is not afraid. He is peaceful. Suddenly, he hears his name. Samuel. His eyes fly open. Here I am, he calls. He immediately gets up and goes to Eli. Here I am, for you called me? Eli, awakened from a sound sleep, turns towards Samuel's voice, for his eyes are so dim now that he can only see the shadow of Samuel's form in the light of the Lord's lamp. I did not call you, he says. Go lie down again. Confused, but thinking maybe it had been a dream, Samuel returns to his bed and lies down again. Closing his eyes, he breathes deeply, quieting his heart from its racing a few moments before. A few minutes pass when he again hears his name, Samuel. Here I am, he answers again and jumps up to go to Eli. Here I am. For you called me? Samuel says again. I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Eli answers him, a little perturbed at having once again being awakened. Samuel, a little more confused, sure that he had heard his name, walks slowly back toward his bed. Was Eli playing a joke on him? Uh, the old man didn't usually have much of a sense of humor. But Eli was sure it was no dream. He had not yet been sleeping. Soon, a third time, Samuel hears a voice. Samuel! A little weary and wary of approaching Eli a third time, Samuel still goes to his mentor and says, Here I am, for you called me. Eli is silent for a moment, and then realizes what must be happening. It must be the Lord calling to Samuel. He had been waiting for this moment. He knew it would come. He knew what to do. Taking Samuel's hand, he instructs him, go, <laughs> lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. A little afraid and a little excited, Samuel returns to his bed, repeating to himself the words Eli had told him. He waits, listening with all his might, until his eyes are too heavy to hold open any longer. And then he hears it. Samuel, Samuel. His heart jumps, but he remembers the words Eli has instructed him to say. 
speak Lord for your servant hears and suddenly he hears softly but clearly the voice of the Lord his heart leaps his vision clouds and all around him is this beautiful terrifying voice he can feel it resonating in his chest he listens not only with his ears but with his very soul the words he is given by the Lord are awesome and sad and weighty he doesn't want to repeat them to Eli because they are a judgment on him but he knows he must he has been given a task by the Lord and he can do nothing but tell all that he has been given to say and when the next morning he tells Eli all though his heart is sad it is full and from that day on he always spoke what the Lord gave him to say and Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground as you drift to sleep tonight listen for the Lord's voice he is calling you can you hear him are you ready to say along with Samuel here I am for you called me God has placed a call on your life that's a magnificent and awesome thing you can rest because you know that you are in the care of the Lord he will not let you fail Philippians 1 6 tells us and I am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ keep breathing deeply inhaling God's call exhaling doubt insecurity fear inhale peace knowing that you are uniquely placed to do what God is calling you to do exhale anxiety control questions here I am Lord you called me repeat that again here I am Lord you called me let him guide you and enable you and work through you as you surrender your will to his like Samuel you are dedicated to the Lord he loves you he has called you you are his sleep deeply and peacefully because you are safe in that truth let me pray over you as you sleep sovereign God thank you for the call you have placed on my life help me to lean into and live that call with all my heart thank you for saving me thank you for making me yours I acknowledge my moment by moment need for you thank you for never leaving me or forsaking me I surrender my selfish desires to you knowing that you are my loving father amen 
One reason you may be having trouble falling asleep is worry and anxiety. So as we begin, let me lead you in your first prayer of surrender and forgiveness. In this meditation, we hear the depth of David's heart. He wrote after a visit from the prophet Nathan. David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. This is a psalm of repentance, of sorrow, and seeking restoration. As you hear this prayer from Psalm 51, feel yourself relaxing, falling back, and surrendering yourself into the loving and forgiving arms of Jesus releasing the weight of your worldly cares as you focus on lightness of the gospel. The good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you now. O peaceful and heavenly Father, you give this one, your child, sleep for the refreshing of their soul and body. Grant this one this gift tonight, I pray. Keep them in that perfect peace which you have promised to them, whose mind is fixed on you, and give them such a sense of your presence that in these moments of silence they may enjoy the blessed assurance of your love through you. O peaceful and loving Father, be merciful to this one, O God, because of your constant love, because of your great mercy, wipe away their sins. Wash away all evil and make them clean from their sin tonight. Tonight, let them hear the sounds of joy and gladness. Create in them tonight a pure heart, O God. Give them again the joy that comes from your salvation. God grant this one peace so they can sleep soundlessly and awaken with a renewed spirit ready to face the day ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Feel Jesus' embrace. Feel Jesus whispering his love and care for you tonight as you sleep. As you continue to relax, I want you to pace your breathing as I read scripture to you. As I read the first part of a passage, I want you to very slowly breathe in. And then as I read the second part of the passage, I want you to breathe out. Listen as I read from Psalm 46. Breathe in slowly now as I read. God is our refuge and strength. Now breathe out slowly as I read. And a very present help in your times of trouble. Pace your breathing in and out slowly again as I pray over you from Deuteronomy 31. Breathe in, be strong and courageous, and out, do not fear or be in dread, and in slowly, for it is the Lord your God, and out, who goes with you, and he will not leave you, out, or forsake you. In the darkness now, feel the presence of Christ. Feel the strength of his arms around you. Feel the tenderness of his hands as they rest on your head. Relax into his presence. And again, pace your breathing slowly as this time I pray from Luke 12. And don't be concerned about what to eat or what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little one, for it gives your Father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Dear peaceful Father, bless this one tonight. Bless them. Give them your peace. Smile upon them and give them your rest tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Pace your breathing slowly as I pray from Lamentations 2. Lord God, hear my cry out in the night. At the beginning of the night watch, help me pour out my heart like water before you, 
help me lift my hands to you. Dear peaceful father, take the burdens of this your child tonight. Their burdens can seem so heavy at times. Tonight help them feel lighter, more free, content, safe, and loved in your arms as you take their burdens. In Jesus' name, amen. Your eyes grow heavy, reading for a deep, restful sleep. Again, pace your breathing as I pray from Psalm 3 and 4. I lay down and sleep, safely, in peace, with a tranquil heart. I will lie down and sleep, for I am alone with you, O Lord. Help me dwell in safety and confidence and trust in you dear peaceful father give this child tonight restful sleep and let this time of quiet meditation bring them peace relaxation and sleep in your arms lord fill this night with your radiance for them may they sleep in peace in your name amen slow breathing in and out as i pray god's word over you when you lie down you will not be afraid when you lie down your sleep will be sweet when you will lie down no one will make you afraid many will rejoice with you when you lay down you will be at peace you will sleep for the lord keeps you safe when you lay down to sleep, behold, there is an angel touching you. At this your sleep will be pleasant to you. Dear peaceful father, you have given this child an example of gentleness and humility, a task that is easy and a burden that is light. Accept my prayers to give them the rest that will strengthen them to be of more faithful service to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Pace your breathing as I pray from Psalm 62. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. I quietly submit to him. For my hope is from him. He only is my rock. He only is my salvation. He only is my fortress. He only is my defense. I will not be shaken. I will not be discouraged. On God only my salvation rests. On God only does my glory rest. God is my rock. God is my unyielding strength. My refuge is in God alone. I trust confidently in Him at all times. Oh God, help me. Help me sleep. Help me pour out my soul, be my refuge. Dear peace and restful Heavenly Father, send restful sleep and refresh the tired body of this your child tonight. May your help renew this one. Keep them held tight in your strong arms as you give them peace. Be with this one throughout the night. In Jesus' name, amen. Pace your breathing as I pray from Isaiah 26. God will keep you in perfect and constant peace. Tonight, God will make your mind steadfast, committed, focused on Him tonight. Trust God tonight with your sleep. Take refuge in God's loving arms tonight as you see sleep. Be confident in the arms of your Savior tonight. Trust confidently in God forever. God is your fortress. God is your shield. God is your banner. God is everlasting. He is your protector tonight. He is your rock for all time. Dear peaceful and restful Father, bring this one, your child, rest and sleep tonight. Keep them from tossing. Keep them from turning. Lord God, you never sleep. Lord God, you never slumber. 
So watch over this your child tonight as they sleep. Bring peace to their churning mind. Comfort their mind from spinning. Soothe their heart. Calm them tonight. Give them sweet rest in your arms. In Jesus' name, amen. Pace your breathing as I pray from Psalm 91. God is covering you tonight. God is completely protecting you with his strength. You are protected under his wings tonight. You can find rest under his wings tonight. You can find refuge in the loving arms of God tonight. God's faithfulness is your shield tonight. God's faithfulness is a wall protecting you from harm so you can rest tonight. In God's presence tonight, tonight. In God's arms, you have no need of fear tonight. You are in the presence and resting in the arms of the creator of the universe tonight. Dear peaceful and restful father, let this resting child fill your wings over them tonight as they rest. Let this sleeping child fill the shield of your arms, protecting them from fear and harm tonight. Let this peaceful soul feel the wall protecting them from harm tonight. The wall built lovingly by you, the creator of the universe. The creator is that sits now by the side of this child as they sleep. In Jesus' name, amen. Pace your breathing as you listen to the story from Luke 8. Breathe slowly and deeply as you imagine yourself in the boat. Jesus and his disciples are all around you. You hear Jesus tell you to prepare. Prepare to cross over the Sea of Galilee. You watch as Jesus falls asleep. Jesus, your Savior, curls up in the boat to sleep. You sit next to him. You lean on him as your Savior rests. The wind begins to hit your face, the spray from the waves. You begin to feel water at your feet. You wake up your master who is sleeping. You see the look of peace in his eyes. You are in awe of that peace. Jesus waves his hand, perhaps without taking his eyes off of you. You feel the wind stop. The waves are gone. Jesus whispers to you, My child, have faith in me. My child, believe in me. You feel yourself falling asleep in his arms as his peace surrounds you. Dear peaceful and restful Father, give this child tonight your faith. Give this child tonight your peace. No wind in their face, no mist from waves, no water at their feet. Let them hear your peaceful voice. Let them hear your loving voice, your powerful, protecting voice, a voice that calms storms, a voice that brings peace, a voice that brings rest, sleep. Pace your breathing as you listen to the word of God being prayed softly over you. Breathe slow and deep as you hear God's words for you tonight. As you lay down to sleep, do not be afraid tonight. As you lay down tonight, let your sleep be sweet. In peace, God will be with you tonight as you sleep. You are not alone. God is with you, and you will be safe as you sleep. Tonight, God will give you his beloved, peaceful sleep. Tonight, God will give you sleep. God will give you slumber. He will fold your hands as you rest. You will lie down to rest tonight. You will rest peacefully. You will wake up in the morning fresh, for the Lord sustains and cares for you. God will not let you move tonight. You will be at peace. He will be there for you all night because God does not slumber or sleep. He stays with you so that you can sleep. Dear peaceful Father, thank you for your peace, your care, your love, your mercy. 
your salvation as this child of yours finds sleep tonight. As they sleep, let them feel your presence over them. Let them sleep under your wings. And it is in Jesus' name I pray over them. Amen. So when you're ready, I want you to close your eyes and relax. As you listen to my voice, just relax and let me guide you through prayer and the Word of God. One reason you may be having trouble falling asleep is worry and anxiety. So as we begin, let me lead you in your first prayer of surrender and forgiveness. In this meditation, we hear the depth of David's heart. He wrote after a visit from the prophet Nathan. David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. This is a psalm of repentance, of sorrow, and seeking restoration. As you hear this prayer from Psalm 51, feel yourself relaxing, falling back, and surrendering yourself into the loving and forgiving arms of Jesus releasing the weight of your worldly cares as you focus on lightness of the gospel. The good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you now. O peaceful and heavenly Father, you give this one, your child, sleep for the refreshing of their soul and body. Grant this one this gift tonight, I pray. Keep them in that perfect peace which you have promised to them, whose mind is fixed on you, and give them such a sense of your presence that in these moments of silence they may enjoy the blessed assurance of your love through you. O peaceful and loving Father, be merciful to this one, O God, because of your constant love, because of your great mercy, wipe away their sins. Wash away all evil and make them clean from their sin tonight. Tonight, let them hear the sounds of joy and gladness. Create in them tonight a pure heart, O God. Give them again the joy that comes from your salvation. God grant this one peace so they can sleep soundlessly and awaken with a renewed spirit ready to face the day ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Feel Jesus' embrace. Feel Jesus whispering his love and care for you tonight as you sleep. As you continue to relax, I want you to pace your breathing as I read scripture to you. As I read the first part of a passage, I want you to very slowly breathe in. And then as I read the second part of the passage, I want you to breathe out. Listen as I read from Psalm 46. Breathe in slowly now as I read. God is our refuge and strength. Now breathe out slowly as I read. And a very present help in your times of trouble. Pace your breathing in and out slowly again as I pray over you from Deuteronomy 31. Breathe in, be strong and courageous, and out, do not fear or be in dread, and in slowly, for it is the Lord your God, and out, who goes with you, in, he will not leave you, out, or forsake you. In the darkness now, feel the presence of Christ. Feel the strength of his arms around you. Feel the tenderness of his hands as they rest on your head. Relax into his presence. And again, pace your breathing slowly as this time I pray from Luke 12. And don't be concerned about what to eat or what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little one, for it gives your Father great happiness 
to give you the kingdom. Dear peaceful Father, bless this one tonight. Bless them. Give them your peace. Smile upon them and give them your rest tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Pace your breathing slowly as I pray from Lamentations 2. Lord God, hear my cry out in the night. At the beginning of the night watch, help me pour out my heart like water before you. Help me lift my hands to you. Dear peaceful Father, take the burdens of this your child tonight. Their burdens can seem so heavy at times. Tonight, help them feel lighter, more free, content, safe, and loved in your arms as you take their burdens. In Jesus' name, amen. Your eyes grow heavy, reading for a deep, restful sleep. Again, pace your breathing as I pray from Psalm 3 and 4. I lay down and sleep, safely, in peace, with a tranquil heart. I will lie down and sleep, for I am alone with you, O Lord. Help me dwell in safety and confidence and trust in you. Dear peaceful Father, give this child tonight restful sleep and let this time of quiet meditation Bring them peace, relaxation, and sleep in your arms. Lord, fill this night with your radiance for them. May they sleep in peace in your name. Amen. Slow breathing in and out as I pray God's word over you. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. When you will lie down, no one will make you afraid. Many will rejoice with you. When you lay down, you will be at peace. You will sleep. For the Lord keeps you safe. When you lay down to sleep, behold, there is an angel touching you. At this, your sleep will be pleasant to you. Dear peaceful Father, you have given this child an example of gentleness and humility, a task that is easy and a burden that is light. Accept my prayers to give them the rest that will strengthen them to be of more faithful service to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Pace your breathing as I pray from Psalm 62. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. I quietly submit to him, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock. He only is my salvation. He only is my fortress. He only is my defense. I will not be shaken. I will not be discouraged. On God only my salvation rests. On God only does my glory rest. God is my rock. God is my unyielding strength. My refuge is in God alone. I trust confidently in Him at all times. Oh God, help me. Help me sleep. Help me pour out my soul. Be my refuge. Dear peace and restful Heavenly Father, send restful sleep and refresh the tired body of this your child tonight. May your help renew this one. Keep them held tight in your strong arms as you give them peace. Be with this one throughout the night. In Jesus' name, amen. Pace your breathing as I pray from Isaiah 26. God will keep you in perfect and constant peace. Tonight, God will make your mind steadfast, committed, focused on Him tonight. Trust God tonight with your sleep. Take refuge in God's loving arms tonight as you see sleep. Be confident in the arms of your Savior tonight. Trust confidently in God forever. God is your fortress. 
God is your shield. God is your banner. God is everlasting. He is your protector tonight. He is your rock for all time. Dear peaceful and restful father, bring this one, your child, rest and sleep tonight. Keep them from tossing. Keep them from turning. Lord God, you never sleep. Lord God, you never slumber. So watch over this your child tonight as they sleep. Bring peace to their churning mind. Comfort their mind from spinning. Soothe their heart. Calm them tonight. Give them sweet rest in your arms. In Jesus' name, amen. Pace your breathing as I pray from Psalm 91. God is covering you tonight. God is completely protecting you with his strength. You are protected under his wings tonight. You can find rest under his wings tonight. You can find refuge in the loving arms of God tonight. God's faithfulness is your shield tonight. God's faithfulness is a wall protecting you from harm so you can rest tonight. In God's presence tonight, tonight. In God's arms, you have no need of fear tonight. You are in the presence and resting in the arms of the creator of the universe tonight. Dear peaceful and restful father, let this resting child fill your wings over them tonight as they rest. Let this sleeping child fill the shield of your arms, protecting them from fear and harm tonight. Let this peaceful soul feel the wall protecting them from harm tonight. The wall built lovingly by you, the creator of the universe. The creator is that sits now by the side of this child as they sleep. In Jesus' name, amen. Pace your breathing as you listen to the story from Luke 8. Breathe slowly and deeply as you imagine yourself in the boat. Jesus and his disciples are all around you. You hear Jesus tell you to prepare. Prepare to cross over the Sea of Galilee. You watch as Jesus falls asleep. Jesus, your Savior, curls up in the boat to sleep. You sit next to him. You lean on him as your Savior rests. The wind begins to hit your face. The spray from the waves. You begin to feel water at your feet. You wake up your master who is sleeping. You see the look of peace in his eyes. You are in awe of that peace. Jesus waves his hand, perhaps without taking his eyes off of you. You feel the wind stop. The waves are gone. Jesus whispers to you, My child, have faith in me. My child, believe in me. You feel yourself falling asleep in his arms as his peace surrounds you. Dear peaceful and restful father, give this child tonight your faith. Give this child tonight your peace. No wind in their face, no mist from waves, no water at their feet. Let them hear your peaceful voice. Let them hear your loving voice, your powerful, protecting voice, a voice that calms the storms, a voice that brings peace, a voice that brings rest, sleep. Pace your breathing as you listen to the word of God being prayed softly over you. Breathe slow and deep as you hear God's words for you tonight. As you lay down to sleep, do not be afraid tonight. As you lay down tonight, let your sleep be sweet. In peace, God will be with you tonight as you sleep. You are not alone. God is with you, and you will be safe as you sleep. Tonight, God will give you his beloved peaceful sleep. Tonight, God will give you sleep. God will give you slumber. He will fold your hands as you rest. You will lie down to rest tonight. 
you will rest peacefully. You will wake up in the morning fresh, for the Lord sustains and cares for you. God will not let you move tonight. You will be at peace. He will be there for you all night because God does not slumber or sleep. He stays with you so that you can sleep. Dear peaceful Father, thank you for your peace, your care, your love, your mercy, your salvation as this child of yours finds sleep tonight. As they sleep, let them feel your presence over them. Let them sleep under your wings. And it is in Jesus' name I pray over them. Amen. If you have found your way here, this Bible bedtime story is here to help you find the rest and sleep you seek. Imagine how good you will feel following a restful night of sleep. I invite you to put aside anything which you are carrying. Close your eyes. Getting the right amount of sleep is critical to your well-being. A matter of fact, it's so important, it's mentioned throughout Scripture. When you are ready, allow yourself to wind down. Take a deep breath in through your nose and slowly breathe out through your mouth. As you breathe out, let all the worries of your day float away. This is your time for peace and rest. In Proverbs 3.24, it says, When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. And in Psalm 3, 5, the psalmist writes, I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. So, as you lay your weary body under the sheet and blanket, allow yourself to sink into the bed and allow the pillow to carry the weight of your head, feeling your bed carry the weight of your body. Like plants need water to survive, your body and mind needs rest to renew itself. Close your eyes. Breathe in peaceful thoughts. Exhale, worry and anxiety. Stretch your feet and toes, relieving tight muscles, slowly rotating your ankles. Feel the sense of relief in your tired feet that have carried you to and fro throughout the day. Relax now. Heavenly Father, how I thank you for bringing me safely to the end of the day. And I praise and thank you for your loving kindness and great goodness to me today. Thank you for the many blessings and provisions that you bestowed on me, for keeping me safe and guiding me and bringing me once again to that time of day when I can recharge my spirit and soul with a refreshing night's sleep. Forgive me, I pray, if I have said or done anything that was not honoring to your name or have sought to do things in my own strength rather than relying totally on you. For I praise you 
but your grace is sufficient for your strength is perfected in my weakness and now Lord as I lie down I pray that you would watch over me to protect and keep me safe give me a deep and refreshing sleep and may I cast any burdens or difficulties on you and not allow my mind to fret or worry for you have promised to carry all my burdens if I will just give them to you protect those I love and father draw those who are far from you close to your embrace I thank you that my life is safe in your arms this I pray in Jesus name amen with your eyes closed our journey tonight takes us to a beautiful forest the pine trees tower above your head the lingering rays of sunlight fade as the evening darkness takes over the light of day through the haze of the dusk sky you see a cabin in the distance a candle flickers through the windows it seems strange that this cabin would be in such a secluded place but you are tired could this be my place of rest for the evening you ask yourself as you approach the inviting quaint cabin in the woods you notice the door is slightly open a crooked sign hanging on an old rusty nail reads come in make yourself at home even though the sign says you are welcome you hesitate but you slowly push open the worn wooden door to peek in as you look into the cabin Jesus says come in my child he says I've been waiting for you he looks at you and says let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat he says to you come with me to a quiet place and get some rest in the corner of the cabin you notice a bed made of willow wood and two fluffy pillows leaning against the headboard crafted of bent willow branches as Jesus in a rocking chair next to the warmth of a fire he says I am the vine you are the branches whoever abides in me and I in him he it is that bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing if anyone does not abide in me he is thrown away like a branch and withers and the branches are gathered thrown into the fire and burned you begin to drift off to sleep under the watchful eye of Jesus the Son of God the Prince of peace Jesus repeats those words as found in John 15 56 remember my child I am the vine you are the branches 
Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. The fruit that Jesus speaks of is simply evidence of your relationship with him. Fast asleep now, in this little cabin in the woods, you realize you've not known this place of peace before. You become more comfortable in your bed as the candle flickers across the room. Jesus continues to pray for you as he sits in his handmade rocking chair. As you drift further into a land of dreams, do you see the vineyard just outside the cabin? You hadn't noticed it on your journey to the cabin as there is a thick wall of darkness. But now you see miles and miles of grapevines. Each plant is loaded with grapes. Imagine the growth you see in your life as the fullness of Christ's resurrection fuels and nurtures such growth. Imagine the fruitfulness that you would like to see and know that God supports you in pursuing it. Jesus continues to watch over you as you drift into a deep sleep. Abide in Jesus now. Rest in God's grace. The rhythm of your breathing gets deeper and deeper. Abide in Him and he will abide in you. As Philippians 1 6 says, he who began a good work in you will complete it. Father, as I come to the end of another very busy day, I praise and thank you for the gift of sleep and the wonderful way that the nighttime hours seem to sweep away all my cares and melt away all my worries as I rest in you. Thank you that I may confidently cast all our cares and concerns upon you and lay all of our burdens down at your feet knowing that you love me with a perfect love and care for me with fatherly concern. Keep me safe this night from any perils and dangers. Enlighten the darkness of this night with your perfect peace, your gracious tranquility, in your serene grace. Protect me through the hours of darkness. Thank you that you are my shield and protection, my rock of salvation, and my hope and strength. Hold me close, Lord Jesus. I pray that I may sleep securely, knowing that you are by my bed every moment of the night. Thank you. That moment by moment, I am kept in your love. Amen. Rest in the truth of God's word 
as you abide in Christ remember Proverbs 3 24 when you lie down you will not be afraid when you lie down your sleep will be sweet continue to sleep knowing abide in him and Jesus will abide in you in Proverbs 3 24 it says when you lie down you will not be afraid when you lie down your sleep will be sweet and in Psalm 3 5 the psalmist writes I lie down and sleep I wake again because the Lord sustains me so as you lay your weary body under the sheet and blanket allow yourself to sink into the bed and allow the pillow to carry the weight of your head feeling your bed carry the weight of your body like plants need water to survive your body and mind needs rest to renew itself close your eyes breathe in peaceful thoughts exhale worry and anxiety stretch your feet and toes relieving tight muscles slowly rotating your ankles feel the sense of relief in your tired feet that have carried you to and fro throughout the day relax now Heavenly Father how I thank you for bringing me safely to the end of the day and I praise and thank you for your loving kindness and great goodness to me today thank you for the many blessings and provisions that you bestowed on me for keeping me safe and guiding me and bringing me once again to that time of day when I can recharge my spirit and soul with a refreshing night's sleep forgive me I pray if I have said or done anything that was not honoring to your name or have sought to do things in my own strength rather than relying totally on you for I praise you that your grace is sufficient for your strength is perfected in my weakness and now Lord as I lie down I pray that you would watch over me to protect and keep me safe give me a deep and refreshing sleep and may I cast any burdens or difficulties on you and not allow my mind to fret or worry for you have promised to carry all my burdens if I will just give them to you protect those I love and father draw those who are far from you close to your embrace I thank you that my life is safe in your arms this I pray in Jesus name amen with your eyes closed our journey tonight takes us to a beautiful forest the pine trees tower above your head 
the lingering rays of sunlight fade as the evening darkness takes over the light of day through the haze of the dusk sky you see a cabin in the distance a candle flickers through the windows it seems strange that this cabin would be in such a secluded place but you are tired could this be my place of rest for the evening you ask yourself as you approach the inviting quaint cabin in the woods you notice the door is slightly open a crooked sign hanging on an old rusty nail reads come in make yourself at home even though the sign says you are welcome you hesitate but you slowly push open the worn wooden door to peek in as you look into the cabin Jesus says come in my child he says I've been waiting for you he looks at you and says let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat he says to you come with me to a quiet place and get some rest in the corner of the cabin you notice a bed made of willow wood and two fluffy pillows leaning against the headboard crafted of bent willow branches as Jesus in a rocking chair next to the warmth of a fire he says I am the vine you are the branches whoever abides in me and I in him he it is that bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing if anyone does not abide in me he is thrown away like a branch and withers and the branches are gathered thrown into the fire and burned you begin to drift off to sleep under the watchful eye of Jesus the Son of God the Prince of peace Jesus repeats those words as found in John 15 56 remember my child I am the vine you are the branches whoever abides in me and I in him he it is that bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing if anyone does not abide in me he is thrown away like a branch and withers and the branches are gathered thrown into the fire and burned the fruit that Jesus speaks of is simply evidence of your relationship with him fast asleep now in this little cabin in the woods you realize you've not known this place of peace before you become more comfortable in your bed as the candle flickers across the room Jesus continues to pray for you as he sits in his handmade rocking chair as you drift further into a land of dreams do you see the vineyard just outside the cabin you hadn't noticed it on your journey to the cabin as there is a thick wall of darkness but now you see 
miles and miles of grapevines. Each plant is loaded with grapes. Imagine the growth you see in your life as the fullness of Christ's resurrection fuels and nurtures such growth. Imagine the fruitfulness that you would like to see and know that God supports you in pursuing it. Jesus continues to watch over you as you drift into a deep sleep. Abide in Jesus now. Rest in God's grace. The rhythm of your breathing gets deeper and deeper. Abide in Him, and He will abide in you. As Philippians 1 6 says, He who began a good work in you will complete it. Father, as I come to the end of another very busy day, I praise and thank you for the gift of sleep and the wonderful way that the nighttime hours seem to sweep away all my cares and melt away all my worries as I rest in you. Thank you that I may confidently cast all our cares and concerns upon you and lay all of our burdens down at your feet, knowing that you love me with a perfect love and care for me with fatherly concern. Keep me safe this night from any perils and dangers Enlighten the darkness of this night with your perfect peace, your gracious tranquility, and your serene grace. Protect me through the hours of darkness. Thank you that you are my shield and protection, my rock of salvation and my hope and strength. Hold me close, Lord Jesus. I pray that I may sleep securely, knowing that you are by my bed every moment of the night. Thank you. That moment by moment, I am kept in your love. Amen. Rest in the truth of God's word. As you abide in Christ, remember Proverbs 3:24. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Continue to sleep, knowing, abide in Him, and Jesus will abide in you. The end of a long day is here. It is time to rest from your work and responsibility. For now, your only job is to focus on peaceful sleep in the presence of the Lord. Take a deep breath in and release it slowly. Feel the tension leave your body as you relax every muscle. Inhale and exhale a few more times releasing all lingering thoughts to the Lord. 
Now, invite the Holy Spirit to be with you as you sleep. Ask him to cover you with his peace. Love, joy, and peace are part of who God is. By his spirit, he releases these fruits into your life as well. Welcome his presence to be with you and abide in the fruits of his comfort tonight. Feel the warmth of the covers and the stillness of your surroundings and close you with a sense of calm. Breathe in and let it out. Tonight, I will tell you a comforting story about the gift of God's favor. And just in case you're wondering, God's favor is the undeserved grace that he chooses to give because he loves and delights in us. So, settle your mind on the gift of God's love and delight over you. Receive his undeserved grace and know that he loves you with an everlasting love. Now, please allow me to pray over you. Good and gracious God, I pray for this listener tonight, your beloved child, who is resting in your presence and seeking the gift of your favor. Thank you for being with them. Please calm their mind and rein in all the thoughts that are not of you. Cover them with the warmth of your love and help them know that they are held by you. In the name of your son, Jesus, I ask for the gift of your favor to be revealed to them as they fall asleep. Please remind them that your presence alone is a divine blessing. Help them feel safe and secure in your love and provision tonight. Thank you, good father. It is in the name of your son, Jesus, I pray. Amen. As we hear this sweet meditation from Psalm chapter 5, I encourage you to allow the words to stream over you and through you as living water for your soul. As the Psalm of David begins, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Allow the meditations of your heart to be poured out freely to the Father. He hears you, even when you don't say a word. He considers everything about you. As Psalm 40 verse 5 says, Your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. Rest peacefully in the knowledge that God thinks about you. His thoughts toward you are more than can be numbered. Thank you, God, that you would keep us in mind, that your thoughts over us are too numerous to count. We are so undeserving of you, yet your word reminds us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We are humbled by the gift of your favor the gift of your love and mercy. Thank you, Father. We love you. In Jesus' name. Continue to rest peacefully as I share a story, a narrative of God's gift of divine favor. A young man walked along the beach at night. He was praying and seeking God's will for his life. And as he walked, he looked for a sign of God's favor. As he stood at the ocean's edge, 
letting the cool water lap over his feet. He looked up at the moonlit sky, thanking God for his magnificent creation. He marveled at the fact that God knew each star by name, stars as numerous as the sand on the seashore. Then something in the distance caught his eye. It was a unique star formation, one he had never seen before. The stars were in the unmistakable shape of a cross. And as he gazed upon that cross in the night sky, he immediately sensed the Lord say, My dear child, I have given you everything through my son Jesus. I have given you everything. The gift of God's favor has been poured out on us through the cross of Jesus Christ. Rest in the shadow of the cross tonight, knowing that God has provided everything for you. The young man's life was changed that night. All clouds of uncertainty were lifted away, for he knew that he only needed to look up and find what he had been looking for all along, peace and favor in Christ Jesus. Feel the clouds lift away, as the Holy Spirit reminds you of the divine favor you have in Christ. Be covered in his peace tonight. The gift of God's favor is unmerited and undeserved. Yet, through his Son, it is given freely to all who would receive it. Receive the gift of God's favor through Jesus tonight. Heavenly Father, giver of all good things, thank you for giving your child the gift of your favor tonight. Thank you for reminding them of your son and his sacrifice on the cross. Please, Lord, help this beloved person rediscover your divine favor, the gift of salvation and hope in you. Bless them, keep them, guard and guide them as only you can. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I will pray. The cry of the young man's heart was heard by God. All of his prayers were poured out to the Father on the moonlit beach that night. And by God's grace, he was reminded of what he had already been given. My King and my God, to you I pray. Rest in the presence of your King and your God. But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. Better is one day in the house of the Lord than a thousand elsewhere. Feel the holiness of his presence as you envision being in the house of the Lord, kneeling before his throne. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness. Make your way straight before my face. God's righteousness was given to us through the sacrifice of his Son, in Jesus Christ alone, we are shown the way. All the crooked places are made straight. Every confusing idea is clarified in him. And we know that he will make his way clear before our eyes. Breathe in and let it out. Rest in the righteousness of Christ. Lord, please make your way straight for this beloved person tonight. 
for your way is good and your will is pleasing. Straighten all the crooked places and restore this child as they sleep, as they surrender their lives to you and rest deeply in your presence. Please cover them in the multitude of your mercy and the gift of your favor. In the name of Jesus, amen. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy, because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. You, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. The gift of God's favor is truly a gift, unmerited and undeserved. His love delights our souls, and through his limitless grace and mercy, he gives us the gift of his favor. Rest in God's grace and mercy tonight. Breathe deeply of his love for you. Exhale in the calm presence of his spirit. Lord God, consider this beloved child tonight. Gently remind them of what you've already given them. Speak over them in hushed tones and lull them into a deep and peaceful sleep. Thank you for assuring them that you are with them. And thank you for the gift of Jesus the Savior. It is in his name I pray. Amen. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. And I will look up. For the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we can always look up and find you. Let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy, because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. Feel the blessing of God on your life through the gift of his favor and his presence as a shield. Rest peacefully tonight. Holy God, keeper of our souls, please keep this beloved child in the fold of your arms tonight, right where they are. Cradle them in the gift of your favor. Be their shield and their protector as they sleep. Help them dream of heavenly things, things that are promised for them. Continue to show yourself in the wonders of creation and remind them that through your Son, they have received the gift of your favor forever and ever. Amen. As you begin to go to sleep tonight, listen peacefully to the promise that every knee shall bow before him. Psalms chapter 95 verse 6 gently encourages us, O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Know you are secure in the knowledge that your prayers are being heard. The unwanted trials and sufferings have been consumed through Jesus' work. In your dreams, may you see the wonders of God come to pass in your life. So get comfortable, snuggle down into the covers, and relax. Close your eyes and feel the day melt away. Take a deep breath and then exhale it, almost like a sigh. 
feel the emptiness of your lungs before taking another breath in and out reflect on where your knees and feet are and relax them removing the tensions of the day think of them kneeling at the foot of the cross with no fear or anxious thoughts safe and secure in the Savior's presence as you pray Lord Jesus I thank you for this promise that every knee will bow I think of those who don't serve you and how their knees will bow I also think of myself and how I will be humbled before you Lord even now give me peace within my soul to know that you are a just God a loving and merciful God who forgives and renews renew my spirit through peaceful sleep I pray amen many people kneeled before Jesus in mark chapter 1 verse 40 a leper knelt before Jesus imploring if you will you can make me clean leprosy was a terrible disease not only physically but emotionally causing a person to be an outcast from his family and community imagine the scene Jesus with a crowd of people pressing around him the murmur of whispers as the crowd parts in fear that this poor leper might touch and infect them but Jesus doesn't move away the leper in his tattered clothing feeling his weakness and shame showing every ounce of his desperation his hands fall limply to the ground to support himself and his eyes don't open as he breathes deeply it took so much energy and faith to just approach Jesus to break through the barriers of social norms and to hope one more time in someone something that could help him if you will you can he spoke he did not doubt Jesus ability to make him clean but he did doubt his willingness would this man be willing does he love him enough does he consider him worthy Jesus responded by healing him physically and emotionally the next verse goes on to tell us that Jesus moved with pity he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him I will be clean Jesus is moved by our needs our humility as we kneel before him others may walk by us not noticing us not acknowledging our presence but Jesus is moved to feeling picture him stretching out his hand towards you we place ourselves before him and he stretches himself towards us he goes beyond the everyday he moves into action towards us feel the soft gentle touch of Jesus on you for this leper it was probably the first time he had been touched that someone cared enough to risk infection for a long time and then Jesus whispers I will he is not only able but he is willing he wants to use his power in our lives 
for our good he sees us and he wants to help and then he says those wonderful words the words we have been longing to hear be clean feel the power of forgiveness of mercy not only does he see you he wants to help you even now as you drift off to sleep he is touching you and helping you in ways you may never know thank the Lord for his willingness to touch you to heal your hurts feel the power the release flowing through you even now as you rest in the moment relaxed in your efforts receiving his grace once a mother came to Jesus and knelt before him Matthew chapter 20 verse 20 through 21 says then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons and kneeling before him she asked him for something and he said to her what do you want this is such a tender picture of a mother wanting what is best for her sons like the leper it took faith courage for her to come before Jesus and kneel she was probably not young as her sons were adults she may have even struggled to take such a prone position it showed her reverence for him and her complete faith that he could and would do what she asked picture yourself kneeling in front of Jesus knowing he has the strength to meet all your needs picture yourself kneeling in front of him wanting to ask him something but not really finding the words what if he thinks we're not worthy to ask or that it is a silly thing what if he thinks it's too big for him or even worse that he doesn't want to do it and then picture him gently saying what do you want he wanted to hear everything that was on this mother's heart he wanted her to pour out her need even if it seemed silly to others it was not to him he cares he invites her he invites you unburden your heart to him even as you take your next breath breathe it out to him let him know your longings and then feel your anxiety melt as he takes your burdens those unfulfilled dreams and desires he takes your burdens off your back and places them on his own he wants to know each one of them and he wants to free you from them even if they seem silly or trite he wants to know Feel the weight taken off of you. Feel the release of tension emotionally and physically. Relax because it is no longer your burden, but his. Relax your shoulders, your arms, your neck. There is a beautiful word picture as you read further into our original psalm passage. Oh, come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand there are so many reasons to kneel before Jesus there is desperation like the leper there is a love for others like the mother but the knowledge of who God is the character of God that also causes us to fall on our knees he is our Lord and to say it another way he is our master he has chosen us to be his sheep in his pasture being cared for without worry or stress 
eating his lush grass provided for thank him for calling you to himself reflect on the sweetness as he entered your life with his saving power of his forgiveness of his grace of his salvation God is also our maker as the person who created you he knows you because he formed you as his work of art he knows your heart and desires and longings he also knows your weaknesses your struggles he more than anyone else knows what you are lacking and how he can meet your needs picture in your mind an artist painting a beautiful painting of a city see colors and parts you are drawn to then look around in the painting and see the shadows and darkness that you maybe don't really like God painted you with beauty and shadows he wants to be with you even in the shadows or picture a potter forming a vase on the potter's wheel spinning around and around right now it's a shapeless blob as it goes around and around his hands firm yet gentle embrace the vase he knows its purpose he knows its possibilities as he places pressure in one location he allows it to be free in others causing it to take a unique shape he knows the color glaze he's going to put on the outside but more than anything he knows the love he has felt in forming the inside and then there is the oven the kiln where the vase is baked he knows the perfect temperature that will bake the vase without breaking it he knows how long the vase needs to bake to make it strong he is perfect and he makes things that are perfect in his eyes in the next verse the psalmist reminds us for he is our god and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand we have been thinking tonight of who god is but this is a gentle reminder of who we are the sheep of his pasture he wants to care for us by providing pastures places of refreshment and rest he has provided the place you are in right now to give you rest close your eyes picture yourself as a sheep content in your pasture content in having the good shepherd care for you lay yourself down and cuddle into the deep lush grass take a deep breath and listen to the stream nearby feel the coolness of the breeze as it strokes your face melt into the ground as you start to fall asleep knowing you are safe in his hands as we rest in his pasture let's talk to God let's bow our knee in submission to him and his will Lord we thank you that every knee will bow we thank you for the way you have met the needs of those in Scripture as they knelt before you and we know that you will meet our needs as we kneel before you bless this person listening as they are one of the sheep in your pasture and that you hold them in your hand Lord we need rest and sleep as only you can give we need refreshment for tomorrow a renewal of our spirit to do what you have for us to do we pray that even now we will drift off to sleep complete relaxation secure in your love and acceptance knowing that you desire to meet all our needs Lord be with us as we rest in you in the name of Jesus 
Amen. Continue to breathe deeply in and out, knowing that your maker knows all about your life. Sink deeply into the knowledge that he wants to bless you and comfort you and protect you. Rest in his arms. Tonight, you will be lulled to sleep while experiencing the glory of God in the heavens and knowing that the words of God are just, all his ways are pure, all his judgments are righteous. His words are to be desired more than gold, and they are sweeter than honey. Everyone has seen the sky. It spreads over our heads in both daytime and nighttime. You don't hear it speak. It doesn't have words. Yet the glory of God is proclaimed in its very existence. The word of God, on the other hand, often speaks loudly and clearly in our hearts and minds. We hear it preached. We listen to it read, and Psalm 19 reminds us that every word of it is true and can be trusted. As you ready yourself for sleep tonight, settle into your bed in your most comfortable position. Let your muscles relax as you begin taking deep, steadying breaths. Pay attention to the sensations in your body and release the tension you feel in your feet, in your legs, in your back, in your shoulders, in your neck. As you continue to breathe deeply and slowly, repeat these words silently. May my spoken words and unspoken thoughts be pleasing even to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let all the cares of the day melt away as you rest. Release the pressure as you trust the Lord with what concerns you. Keep your breathing slow and steady. Let me pray for you. God, you are our rock and our redeemer, our firm foundation. Thank you for being with this child of yours as they sleep tonight. Thank you for reminding them that you are mighty yet gentle, everywhere at once, yet close by their side. May the picture of this psalm comfort them and relax them tonight so that they might enjoy a peaceful and restful sleep. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Imagine that it is dawn and you are up early, enjoying a freshly brewed cup of coffee. It's deep roasted scent filling your nose, the steam warming your face. You sit at your kitchen table and gaze out the window at the pinkening sky. All is still in your home and your heart is at peace. A few wispy clouds stroll by, carrying the colors of the rising sun like cotton candy held by a child. Early birds flit across the expanse, searching for a small pool of water in which to take their morning bath. There are still a few stars visible in the brightening sky, and a thin crescent moon still glows dimly. But the awakening sun will soon overcome its light. As you ready yourself for your day, 
You take for granted that the sun will make its way across the sky. It's not something you have to think about. Every day it makes its course across the expanse. By the time the rest of your household has risen, the colors of the sunrise have faded, and the golden glow warming the morning air has ascended beyond the tops of the trees whose strong branches stretch like arms toward the warmth. The rest of your morning is spent indoors, working at your job, or going to school, or taking care of your family, being in the place God has given you. You glance occasionally out the window, seeing the changing shadows, the gathering and disturbing of the clouds. Perhaps your cat has followed a sunbeam in your house from window to window, and you envy its carefree life. Or you see kids playing in the park across from your office, running and chasing a ball in the bright green grass, their caregiver watching and calling encouragement of their play. When midday rolls up to your door, you step outside to greet it, again taking for granted that you will see the sun at its peak in the bright blue sky. You sit for a few moments in the bright sunshine, closing your eyes and turning your face to feel the full warmth. A gentle breeze with a hint of the coolness to come ruffles your hair. A quick shadow darts past as a small cloud momentarily scuttles by. You linger for a time, but duty calls and you head back inside. Still feeling the sun's warmth like a hug as you go. High noon races toward dusk as your day dwindles, and your journey home begins with the sun descending toward the western horizon. The wispy clouds have returned, and now they carry the orange, magenta, and purple strains of the setting sun. The sight is magnificent. You never tire of seeing its beauty the rays spreading out the splendor across the sky. Soon, stars begin to pop out of the deepening blue. Constellations become barely discernible. Planets glow brightly. The air cools as the sun disappears below the horizon, sinking quickly, hiding its face until it starts its journey again in the morning. Throughout the day, you have been told the story of God's majesty simply by watching the sky. The heavens are telling the glory of God. They are a marvelous display of his craftsmanship. Day and night, they keep on telling about God. Without a sound or word, silent in the skies. Their message reaches out to all the world. The sun lives in the heavens where God placed it and moves out across the skies as radiant as a bridegroom going to his wedding or as joyous as an athlete looking forward to a race. The sun crosses the heavens from end to end and nothing can hide from its heat. Inside your house, where it's warm and comfortable, you sit in a rose-colored armchair, take off your shoes, and settle in to spend some time alone. On the sturdy brown table beside you sits your Bible, its soft leather cover worn by years of use. Next to it is a pile of work you brought home that you could get some extra money for if you completed it tonight. The thought is tempting. And then you think about that carton of ice cream just sitting there in your freezer. 
Its sweetness entices you. The thought of that icy goodness causes your taste buds to burst in anticipation. And then you glance again at your Bible. You remember how the words it contains have fed your soul time and time again. Verses burst into your mind like the taste buds had in your mouth. Psalm chapter 27, verse 13. I believe that I shall look upon the Lord in the land of the living. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Psalm chapter 48, verse 1. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth, Mount Zion, and the far north, the city of the great king. Your heart quickens as the Spirit of God brings these words to your mind. Psalm chapter 42, verse 1. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we still were sinners, Christ died for us. On and on, the life-giving words of God fill you up. You forget about the extra work beside you. You forget about the ice cream in the freezer. In your hand is all you need. His promises are true. His words are life-giving. God's laws are perfect. They protect us, make us wise, and give us joy and light. God's laws are pure, eternal, just. They are more desirable than gold. They are sweeter than honey dripping from a honeycomb. For they warn us away from harm and give success to those who obey them. Your eyes close with contentment. Your worries are in God's hands. Your heart is at peace. As you end your day with the Lord, you open your heart to His gaze. You want every part of you to be seen, cleansed and available to Him. You want every thought and every action to be pleasing to Him. But how can I ever know what sins are lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults and keep me from deliberate wrongs. Help me to stop doing them. Only then can I be free of guilt and innocent of some great crime. May my spoken words and unspoken thoughts be pleasing even to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Heavenly Father, I pray for this child of yours tonight as they sleep. May your watchful eye be ever upon them in love and grace. Tomorrow, 
may they experience the awesomeness of your glory whenever they look at the sky. If they wake before the dawn, let them see your glory in the sunrise. As they go about their day, may they see your wonders in the sun and the clouds. In the evening, May the sunset remind them of your love and great compassion. And may the stars speak silently to them of your majesty and your intimacy. For you know them each by name. As they sleep, give them peaceful, satisfying dreams. And when they are awake, may your holy, trustworthy words be ever in their thoughts. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Imagine it. Lying down in a beautiful, lush, green pasture. Beside a quiet, soothing stream not a care in the world. Only feeling refreshed, feeling restored, protected, guided, consoled, and loved. Yes, there are shadows. There is darkness. But never so oppressing that it's to be feared. Because God is with you. He has been. He is. And He will be for all eternity. The 23rd Psalm is one of the most beloved of all passages of Scripture. King David, who wrote the Psalm, grew up and worked as a shepherd. So he knew a lot about sheep and shepherding. He loved seeing the Lord as a shepherd. The shepherd's job is to care for you, make you feel safe, nourished, calm, and peaceful. Whether your life feels peaceful tonight, your Father in heaven is the Good Shepherd and is present to love and care for you. So get comfortable in your bed. Lay your head on your pillow. Pull up your covers around you and relax. Breathe deeply and slowly to calm your mind and body. Breathe in and say this, the Lord is my shepherd. Breathe out and say, I shall not want. Relax your muscles. Release the tension from your shoulders and neck. Rest safely in the comfort of your good shepherd. This evening, as countless others have for thousands of years before you, Settle in as the story of the 23rd Psalm transforms you. Listen now to Psalm 23 from the New King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. 
He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As you rest even more deeply, listen once again as you immerse yourself in this verse. The Lord is your shepherd. He is here with you to feed you, to guide you, and to shield you. You shall not want. See his eyes, how he looks at you, the intense care and love. The look that says he knows everything about you, and yet loves you anyway. It's impossible for him to love you any more than he does right now. Rest there. He makes you lie down in green pastures. Feel the cool grass the blue sky, the warmth on your face. Soak up everything you imagine around you. Can you hear the birds twittering happily? A gentle breeze stirs your hair. Smell the sweet scent of the grass and the nearby wildflowers. You are in a safe haven, a wide open space well guarded by your loving shepherd. He leads you beside the still and quiet waters. You hear it bubbling nearby, gentle, soothing. refreshing hear it smell it dangle your toes and your feet in it it is there to soothe you you dip your cupped hand in and pull out a handful of cool water you lean your head down to drink Ah, feel the life that it gives you. Drink deeply of the living water that is Jesus to your soul. He restores your soul, your life. Everything is made new, revived, refreshed. In this time of sleep, your strength will be renewed like the eagles. You will run and not grow weary. You will walk and not faint. He will strengthen you. He will uphold you with his righteous right hand. Your head will be lifted up. Your rest will be deep and sweet.
He leads you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Not wandering, but guided down a path, a well worn path, a known path, a chosen path for you, for you, for him, for your eternity for his name for his glory his light shines on that path his word is a lamp for your feet even though you walk through the sunless valley you will fear no evil for you are with him Yes, there are shadows. Yes, there are storms. Yes, there is distant thunder. But no storm surprise God. No thunder bothers him. No shadows catch him unaware. Rest in his strength. Present in storms. See the growth the rain causes. Notice the flowering the tempest brings. God is with you. He is by your side. He shelters you in his wings. You are his forever. His rod is there to protect you. His staff to guide you to comfort and console you gentle prodding tender reminding a rod that's protective of you a staff that serves to guide you away from harm to comfort you to console you feel soothed now by your heavenly shepherd He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies he prepares it the creator of the universe the author of time he prepares for you before you in the presence of your enemies God's focus is on you preparing for you providing for you sit at the table he has prepared see all the gifts that he has laid out before you luscious and sweet fruits dripping with their juices warm and yeasty breads that make your mouth water with their scent cheese freshly made all that is good nutritious and lovely to behold is before you on a laden table ready for you to partake he has anointed and refreshed your head with oil feel his hands on your head Feel the oil in his hands, the oil running through your hair, dripping down your cheeks. Oil mixed with tears, his tears of joy, your tears of love. Feel chosen, feel loved, feel anointed. your cup overflows his blessings don't just fill you they overflow you feel it see it his blessings spilling out of your heart your mind 
your body, and your soul. Running over to those around you, you have an abundance to share. God's love, His protection, His nurture, His very self. It's too much to contain. You long to share it with others. Surely, goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow you all the days of your life. Walk along. Stop for a moment and look behind you. What do you see? Who do you see? See goodness following you? See mercy? See unfailing love? Always present, always close. Walking in step right behind you. Listen carefully. And hear those steps. And you shall dwell forever, throughout all of your days, in the house and in the presence of the Lord. Dwell. Not just in any old place, but living and staying as a permanent resident in the house and presence of God. Not an earthly place of sticks and mud but a heavenly palace built by the Creator himself and not just today but tomorrow all week every month year decade century millennia for all time forever now rest in the green pasture by the still water rest safe from harm allow God's presence to free you to save you breathe it in God's peace and breathe out all of your worries our gracious Heavenly Father our Good Shepherd thank you for leading us and your precious child to the green pasture for making them lie down and rest I pray tonight that they would feel your presence all around them that they would revel in the goodness that you have brought to them may they hear your voice of comfort and feel your hands of care on them when they are afraid may they trust in you knowing that you care for them so very much take all worry away Lord as you walk with them through their valleys remind them moment by moment of your care and provision for them help them to sleep Lord knowing that you will stay by their side you will never leave them nor forsake them you never slumber nor do you sleep so that they can be sure you are ever watchful over them teach them as they sleep tonight to partake of your abundant provision help them to see all around them that you have given them every good gift everything they need for life and salvation you show them the path of righteousness you lead them wherever you need them to go you will never ever abandon them comfort them in your sweet rest tonight Lord as numerous as the stars are in the sky are the grains of sand on all the beaches in the world so vast is your love for them let your love 
envelop them like a blanket keeping them safe and warm let the clear waters restore their soul Jesus is the living water and may they thirst for nothing else as the deer pants for the waters may their soul pant for you the living God we thank you and praise you for your loving care in Jesus name amen welcome to this bedtime story from abide a sleep meditation written from the inspiration of the scriptures to help you relax and release the worries of the day tonight I encourage you to remove all distractions from the room it's settled into bed and make yourself comfortable take a few deep breaths in and out feel your muscles relax and all the tension leave your body as you inhale and exhale invite the Holy Spirit to be with you tonight feel his presence cover you as you wait for sleep to come let go of all other thoughts as you focus only on the presence of the Lord and his gift of sleep to you perhaps you've never thought of sleep as a gift from God but it is it is a beautiful gift of peace and rest that comes from the hand of the Father let that sink into your mind for several moments now let's unwrap the gift of sleep tonight imagine a beautifully wrapped package handed to you by your loving creator he encourages you to untie the ribbon and just let it fall away he guides you to remove the wrapping and set it aside he waits patiently as you open the box to discover a beautiful gift the gift of sleep spend a few quiet moments embracing this gift with a heart of thankfulness to the one who loves you and cares about you please let me pray over you tonight thank you good father for the gift of sleep thank you for knowing just what your beloved child needs at the end of a long day help them release every worry and concern to you tonight please cover them with your peace and protection so they can fully relax and find true rest in your presence I pray this in the precious name of your son Jesus amen
sleep is the cessation of labor it is the time of day that we let go of every unfinished task we surrender it to the hands of the father he will take care of it he will guard what we have committed to him take a moment to commit everything to God whatever remains undone it's okay let it go rest peacefully in the Savior tonight don't worry about a thing he's got this he's got you often when sleep eludes us it's because we're holding on to the cares of this life we struggle to let go of them because we struggle to trust God we forget that God is the head of our households he is sovereign over us as the psalmist says in Psalm 127 unless the Lord builds the house those who build it labor in vain unless the Lord watches over the city the watchman stays awake in vain dear one the Lord is watching over you tonight there is no need to stay awake with your worries or concerns for the Lord does not slumber nor sleep he will keep watch over you rest in that comforting thought for several moments the psalmist goes on to say that it is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night anxiously working for food to eat for God gives rest to his loved ones God gives rest to his loved ones you are loved by God he has given you the gift of sleep it overtakes you from head to toe you feel your whole body relax you close your eyes and take a deep breath in and slowly let it out what beautiful gifts our father gives to those he loves assurance peace relaxation security and sleep embrace his gift of sleep tonight as I pray let it become the prayer of your heart Heavenly Father thank you for your gift of sleep and what a precious gift it is I am so thankful for your presence tonight your love comforts me your gift of sleep restores me thank you Lord I believe you are sovereign over all things over my life my work and my rest I release all of my anxieties to you thank you so much for gifting me with peace and rest 
tonight in Jesus' name amen now sink your head deeper into the pillow and pull the covers around you allow your breathing to fall into a steady rhythm in and out in and out feel the gift of sleep envelop you like a soft cocoon gently it wraps around you securing you in the loving arms of the father like the cocoon of a butterfly sleep begins to encase you in soft silky warmth the strands of God's peace enclose you in the gentlest way possible for he is a gentle father kind and good from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet you feel safe guarded and secure rest in the security of God's love for several moments sleep is a gift for our bodies for it allows processing restoring and strengthening to take place as we drift through sleep cycles our minds are able to process the day's events we are able to organize information file it away and remember what is most important each cell in our body benefits from sleep it rejuvenates us repairs our tissues and restores us from a long day of hard work oh what a beautiful gift from our Heavenly Father he knows just what our bodies need he created us he created sleep rest in that assurance for a few moments not only do our physical bodies need sleep our spirits need God's true rest in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 we read about God's promise of rest which comes through faith in Jesus Christ for we who have believed do enter that rest we who believe we who trust we who put our faith in the Savior of our souls we enter God's promise of rest settle your heart on that promise for a few moments now please allow me to pray over you again Lord thank you for restoring your beloved one tonight every night as they sleep thank you for rejuvenating them you know just what they need you are good you are sovereign you are holy please allow true rest 
to come to your child tonight as they trust in you settle their minds repair their bodies and restore their hearts unto you thank you Lord in Jesus name amen tonight we'll learn how Jesus the Savior of the world slowed down each day to spend time alone with God and to rest one day during his earthly ministry he had worked so hard for so long that he looked at his disciples and told them let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place then in a beautiful scenic spot on the sea he enjoyed time alone with God the Bible tells us he rested even Jesus needed to get away even Jesus needed to block off time for solitude Jesus knew it was necessary to slow down his mind needed rest his body did too if the creator of the universe needed rest then don't you too sleep is one of God's great gifts it's like a wonderful present from God that you get to open every single day it's a gift filled with peace with solitude with sweet dreams and with time alone with your Creator it's a daily reminder that you need God it's a daily reminder that there's more to life than chores and work God created sleep for our good it refreshes and renews us Proverbs 3 verse 24 says you can go to bed without fear you will lie down and sleep soundly as you prepare for today's story get comfortable and make sure everything around you is the way you want it to be if you fall asleep during the story that's great the abide app will turn off by itself take a long relaxing breath inhale slowly through your nose and hand all your troubles to God this moment is for you and him now exhale slowly through your mouth breathe in again through your nose with your eyes closed picture God's presence all around you Jesus caring for you like a loving shepherd caring for his sheep God's angels are watching over you too then breathe out as you continue breathing slowly stretch out your hands and arms and your feet and legs enjoy the sensation of your muscles and bones relaxing after a long hard day let tension dissolve away as you focus on God let your head sink into your pillow relish the comforting sensation of your sheet or your blanket all are gifts from a marvelous God take another breath inhaling slowly through your nose and then exhaling out of your mouth the day is over rejoice in your rest let me pray for you dear father thank you for this child of God thank you for blessing them thank you for caring for them thank you for showing grace and mercy to them today 
Father, I ask that you will surround this child of God with your presence. Calm their anxious thoughts. Take care of their problems. You are in control, God. You are their rock and their salvation. You have a purpose and a plan for this child of yours. Thank you. Father, your word promises peace and goodness to your children. Psalm 116 verse 7 says, Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Help this child of yours feel your presence. Give them peace. Right now, Father, I ask that you will grant them rest and sweet dreams about your kingdom. Like a loving mother or father caring for a tiny baby, so too you are caring for them. They are safe in your loving arms. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. For today's story, let's take a journey to the past, to the time of Christ. It's a beautiful day in the land of Israel, with only three or four small puffy clouds drifting slowly across a beautiful blue sky like sailboats navigating across the Sea of Galilee. The sun, which has been up for a few hours, hangs in the sky high overhead, but it's not too hot. A cool breeze off the Sea of Galilee rushes across your skin and through your hair. The breeze carries with it familiar aromas that stir your spirit lavender and tulip flowers along with the unmistakable fresh scent of the sea you look to your left and marvel at a small field of flowers with an explosion of colors purple and red and yellow swaying and dancing in the breeze as if they're worshiping the god who created them off in the distance to your left, you spot a shepherd on a small but lush grassy hill, tending to his sheep. He is perhaps in his sixties. He has a gray beard and a wooden staff that towers above his head. He walks with purpose, as someone who has been doing this his entire life. He softly taps the backside of a wandering sheep, ensuring it doesn't get too far from the flock. It quickly rejoins the others. There are perhaps 20 sheep in the group. They obey his every command. Their constant sounds, their bleeding, make you chuckle. The Sea of Galilee is to your right, and you're maybe a five-minute walk from the edge. You spot a medium-sized fishing boat anchored to the shore, and a group of ten or eleven men walking toward it. No, make that thirteen men. They're listening intently to the man at the front a man who walks and speaks as one with authority, but whose frequent smiles and laughs sets his audience at ease. The man has a dark-colored beard, and he's wearing a cream-colored tunic. Like everyone in his party, he's wearing sandals. You quickly realize this man is none other than Jesus himself. He's gesturing with his hands as if he's making a point about something important. One of the apostles, you think it's Peter, 
nods in agreement. He then motions toward the boat, and the men begin stepping into it, one by one. James and John, who are still on land, hold the boat sturdy to make sure no one falls. Listen as we continue the story, as I read God's word from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, Let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. Five minutes have passed since the disciples pushed the boat into the sea. They're far enough from land that no one will trouble them but close enough that you can still see them. Four of the men had been busy paddling the boat away from shore, but a few moments ago, Jesus motioned for them to stop and to sit down in the boat and rest. It was an amazing moment of kindness to watch a man of his stature encourage his disciples to stop working. Currently, the boat had settled on a spot on the sea with no wind. It's floating there, lifelessly on the water, much like a dead tree limb that's been carried helplessly into the sea. These peaceful waters are the perfect conditions for a restful nap, and that's apparently what Jesus had in mind, too. You spot him in the back of the boat his eyes closed and his hands collapsed behind his head in the form of a makeshift pillow. He's asleep. Five or six of the other disciples are napping too. The rest of the disciples, the ones who are awake, are watching a bird flying high overhead, circling the waters as it hunts for its next meal. It's a bald eagle its majestic snow-white head and snow-white tail, making it indistinguishable when set against the picturesque blue sky. Suddenly, the eagle dives toward the water, spreads its wings and glides through the air just above the sea, racing faster than you've ever run in your life. Within seconds, its yellow talons have reached down and secured a small silver fish in the water. For this bald eagle, dinner is ready. You look back over at the boat. Jesus is still napping. Listen again as I read Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32. This time in the Amplified Bible Translation. The apostles, who had been sent out on a mission, gathered together with Jesus and told him everything that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a little while. For there were many people who were continually coming and going, and they could not even find time to eat. And they went away by themselves in the boat to a secluded place. Too often we let work dominate our thoughts and actions. Jesus, though, told his disciples to find a secluded place and rest. He told his disciples to get away from the crowds, slow down, and stop working. He told his disciples not to worry. It's a pattern God established for his people in Genesis when he rested on the seventh day. 
It's also a pattern God established in his creation. The birds of the air, rest. The animals on land, rest. Even fish, slow down and rest. Every day, daylight gives way to dark. Daytime turns into nighttime. And Jesus gives you permission to slow down Cast all your troubles on him and rest in his loving care. He's giving you permission not to worry. He's telling you, let's take a break and get a little rest. He's surrounding you with his presence and granting you peace. The creator of the mountains and the seas rested the giver of life and the savior of the world, took a break from his ministry. The maker of the sun and the moon and the stars slept on a boat. Just as the shepherd on the lush, grassy hillside cares for his sheep, so too does God care for and protect you. He knows everything you need. As Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. God provides for you and blesses you. He lets you rest in green meadows. He leads you beside peaceful streams. He renews your strength. Rest tonight in his providential care. Let me pray for you. Dear Father, Thank you for this child of God. Thank you for blessing them. Thank you for caring for them. Thank you for showing grace and mercy to them today. Father, I ask that you will surround this child of God with your presence. Calm their anxious thoughts. Take care of their problems. You are in control, God. You are their rock and their salvation. You have a purpose and a plan for this child of yours. Thank you. Father, your word promises peace and goodness to your children. Psalm 116 verse 7 says, Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Help this child of yours feel your presence. Give them peace. Right now, Father, I ask that you will grant them rest and sweet dreams about your kingdom. Like a loving mother or father caring for a tiny baby, so too you are caring for them. They are safe in your loving arms. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. For today's story, let's take a journey to the past, to the time of Christ. It's a beautiful day in the land of Israel. 
with only three or four small, puffy clouds drifting slowly across a beautiful blue sky. Like sailboats navigating across the Sea of Galilee. The sun, which has been up for a few hours, hangs in the sky high overhead, but it's not too hot. A cool breeze off the Sea of Galilee rushes across your skin and through your hair. The breeze carries with it familiar aromas that stir your spirit lavender and tulip flowers along with the unmistakable fresh scent of the sea you look to your left and marvel at a small field of flowers with an explosion of colors purple and red and yellow swaying and dancing in the breeze as if they're worshiping the god who created them off in the distance to your left, you spot a shepherd on a small but lush grassy hill, tending to his sheep. He is perhaps in his sixties. He has a gray beard and a wooden staff that towers above his head. He walks with purpose, as someone who has been doing this his entire life. He softly taps the backside of a wandering sheep, ensuring it doesn't get too far from the flock. It quickly rejoins the others. There are perhaps 20 sheep in the group. They obey his every command. Their constant sounds, their bleeding, make you chuckle. The Sea of Galilee is to your right, and you're maybe a five-minute walk from the edge. You spot a medium-sized fishing boat anchored to the shore, and a group of ten or eleven men walking toward it. No, make that thirteen men. They're listening intently to the man at the front a man who walks and speaks as one with authority, but whose frequent smiles and laughs sets his audience at ease. The man has a dark-colored beard, and he's wearing a cream-colored tunic. Like everyone in his party, he's wearing sandals. You quickly realize this man is none other than Jesus himself. He's gesturing with his hands as if he's making a point about something important. One of the apostles, you think it's Peter, nods in agreement. He then motions toward the boat, and the men begin stepping into it, one by one. James and John, who are still on land, hold the boat sturdy to make sure no one falls. Listen as we continue the story, as I read God's word from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. Five minutes have passed since the disciples pushed the boat into the sea. They're far enough from land that no one will trouble them but close enough that you can still see them. Four of the men had been busy paddling the boat away from shore, but a few moments ago, Jesus motioned for them to stop and to sit down in the boat and rest. It was an amazing moment of kindness to watch a man of his stature 
encourage his disciples to stop working. Currently, the boat had settled on a spot on the sea with no wind. It's floating there, lifelessly on the water, much like a dead tree limb that's been carried helplessly into the sea. These peaceful waters are the perfect conditions for a restful nap, and that's apparently what Jesus had in mind, too. You spot him in the back of the boat, his eyes closed and his hands collapsed behind his head in the form of a makeshift pillow. He's asleep. Five or six of the other disciples are napping, too. The rest of the disciples, the ones who are awake, are watching a bird flying high overhead, circling the waters as it hunts for its next meal. It's a bald eagle, its majestic snow-white head and snow-white tail, making it indistinguishable when set against the picturesque blue sky. Suddenly, the eagle dives toward the water, spreads its wings and glides through the air just above the sea, racing faster than you've ever run in your life. Within seconds, its yellow talons have reached down and secured a small silver fish in the water. For this bald eagle, dinner is ready. You look back over at the boat. Jesus is still napping. Listen again as I read Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32, this time in the Amplified Bible Translation. The apostles who had been sent out on a mission gathered together with Jesus and told him everything that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a little while. For there were many people who were continually coming and going, and they could not even find time to eat. And they went away by themselves in the boat to a secluded place. Too often we let work dominate our thoughts and actions. Jesus, though, told his disciples to find a secluded place and rest. He told his disciples to get away from the crowds, slow down, and stop working. He told his disciples not to worry. It's a pattern God established for his people in Genesis when he rested on the seventh day. It's also a pattern God established in his creation. The birds of the air rest. The animals on land rest. Even fish slow down and rest. Every day, daylight gives way to dark. Daytime turns into nighttime. And Jesus gives you permission to slow down, cast all your troubles on him, and rest in his loving care. He's giving you permission not to worry. He's telling you, Let's take a break and get a little rest. He's surrounding you with his presence and granting you peace. The creator of the mountains and the seas rested. The giver of life and the savior of the world took a break from his ministry. The maker of the sun and the moon and the stars slept on a boat. Just as the shepherd on the lush, grassy hillside cares for his sheep, so too does God care for and protect you. He knows everything you need. As Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. 
He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. God provides for you and blesses you. He lets you rest in green meadows. He leads you beside peaceful streams. He renews your strength. Rest tonight in His providential care. Let's pray. Father, You are the creator of all good things. The food we eat, the air we breathe, the friends and family we love. You also are the creator of time and of rest and of sleep. Father, I pray that you will watch over and protect this child of God tonight. Dissolve their anxious thoughts. Let them know that you alone are guiding their lives. You alone are their source of wisdom and strength. Surround them with your presence. Grant them peace. Bless them with sweet dreams of your kingdom. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. As Aaron told God's people in Scripture, May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Good night. Maybe you are here because you struggle with sleep. It's been a long day. You're tired. You've tried streaming a TV show or a movie. Yet sleep eludes you. Now is the time for the refreshing rest of quiet sleep. Close your eyes and allow the ease of inactivity after the busyness of your day wash over you and just let everything go. If you've come here for relief and freedom, especially from anything that worries and troubles you, allow yourself to relax in the comfort of your bed. Allow yourself to follow along with the current of my voice, like the trickle of a gently flowing stream. No more screen time today. Relax your jaw. If you wake in the middle of your sleep, Draw yourself back into the story. May it be a natural response to press into prayer and give praise to Abba, Father God, to Jesus, the Messiah. May the utterances within you instinctively sing praises of thanksgiving, lulling you back to sleep. Everything here has been designed to make you comfortable and safe. Now, let's get ready to sleep. Rest in this moment right now. Know that God has blessed you in so many ways. While it may not be obvious, 
He has protected you when you needed protecting. And He has comforted you when you were broken. Look back over your day. Spend just a minute doing this. For what do you feel most thankful? Give thanks. For what do you feel least thankful? Give this to God. Take a moment to stretch out all of your muscles, allowing them to relax. Allow the tension to melt from your body. beginning at the top of your head and passing down through your body all the way to your feet. Be attentive to each part of your body. Slowly breathe in God's refreshment. Just allow it to happen naturally. Exhale the emotional toxins that may be bothering you, allowing them to tumble off the side of the bed, falling away so that your breathing becomes relaxed and content in God's presence. Your breathing becomes one with the Lord. As you continue to breathe slowly and gently, begin to become aware of the relaxation starting down in your legs and feet. Your legs begin to feel slightly heavier. Your muscles feel loose and flexible. Your legs feel slightly warmer. The blood and energy can flow more freely and easily. All the way down your legs, through wide open blood vessels, you can feel it slowly but freely pulsing down into your feet and toes. Acknowledge your whole self, you as a person made in God's likeness, you in whom God chooses to dwell as you seek holy rest. Embrace the calm in the abiding state of inner peace, stillness, in silence. In the continuing deep spiritual rest of the one true God. Heavenly Father, as your child prepares to rest, we thank you for your love, your compassion, and your grace on them. We give you praise because you are in control of all things. Give them greater faith to submit to your will in every facet of their life. And continue to forgive them when they fail to be what you want them to be. Give them peace in the time of storms and rest when they are weary. Help them to forget their self and be used by you.
to help others as they seek to live for you help them turn loose of their own desires so that your will can be their own oh we thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus amen the psalmist expresses his love for the Lord because God hears and answers his children when they call to him throughout the Psalms he recalls the many troubles and sorrows he has already encountered and how gracious and compassionate the Lord has been to him the Lord heard his cry and the Lord rescued him in the 138th Psalm David expresses gratitude to God this psalm helps us focus on the Lord's goodness I will praise you O Lord with all my heart I sing your praise I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness for you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame when I called you answered me you greatly emboldened me may all the kings of the earth praise you Lord when they hear what you have decreed may they sing of the ways of the Lord for the glory of the Lord is great though the Lord is exalted he looks kindly on the lowly though lofty he sees them from afar though I walk in the midst of trouble you preserve my life you stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes with your right hand you save me the Lord will vindicate me your love O Lord endures forever do not abandon the works of your hands as you snuggle further into your bed your body sinks deeper into your mattress may God bring you holy rest imagine yourself outdoors on a warm and pleasant day you're standing near a pond of water that is calm and clear the surface smooth as the evening hours draw nigh the night sky provides a covering for your holy rest crickets begin to chirp alerting you that it's time for sleep the fading Sun is warm on your face the sunlight casts a peaceful palette of colors that dance across the shining surface of the water there is not another person in sight you slowly reach down and pick up a flat stone just like when you were a child you sidearm toss the stone across the water amazingly it skips not one two or three times but nearly a dozen you haven't lost your touch the water is so calm the stone hardly causes a ripple that same calm of the pond comes over you 
sending soothing and cleansing trickles of relaxation down from the top of your head in every direction to soothe heal and cleanse every muscle and cell of your body you continue to gaze at this pond nestled in among the tall pine trees just outside a mountain village this pond of water its peace causes you to become calm and restful you turn away from the pond and follow a little pathway that takes you to a perfect place a place where you can be by yourself and feel calm and comfortable and rest under a tall tree others have been here before you because you spot a fire circle near where you're sitting the smooth stone surrounding ash from previous fires like sentinels stacks of kindling and wood stand nearby you put your youthful skills to work again to start a small fire within just a few minutes the dry kindling glows bright igniting the larger pieces of wood the tall tree and its piney aroma oh, make the perfect spot to find holy rest your tensions begin to melt away the busyness of city life you hear the sound that surrounds you there's bullfrogs night birds chirping the crackling of the fire stirred by a gentle cooling breeze eventually amongst the bird calls you hear a gentle voice singing a beautiful song it seems to be coming from the trees you hold very still as you listen the words coming to you gently on the breeze I have loved you with an everlasting love the voice sings with unfailing love I have drawn you to myself your heart sings with this sweet voice as it continues the Lord is good to all he has compassion on all he has made as you search the woods with your eyes for the bearer of that voice you see a figure dressed all in white emerge from the woods you have no fear because the words of their song have filled your heart with joy and peace as the figure walks towards you the singing continues the words for the Lord is good and his love endures forever his faithfulness continues through all generations finally they are close enough for you to recognize it's Jesus he comes closer still singing of his love for you and he sits beside you to the fire your heart bursts with joy your Savior and Lord is here by your side you sing in response sovereign Lord you are good your covenant is trustworthy and you have promised these good things to your servant the sweet dialogue between you continues with his words and your response as you sit side by side in perfect peace 
he says taste and see that the Lord is good oh blessed is the one who takes refuge in him you respond the Lord is good a refuge in times of trouble he cares for those who trust in him Jesus smiles into your eyes your beloved brother your Savior your friend your heart exults in God your Savior you close your eyes listening to his words over you but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint for I know the plans I have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you he will never leave you nor forsake you do not be afraid do not be discouraged you lean into Jesus as he continues to sing and your eyes grow heavy you find yourself falling asleep deeply soundly peacefully as the Lord places his arm around you you know you're safe you know you're loved this is holy rest in the arms of Jesus as your breathing gets deeper and your eyes grow heavier through your encounter with Jesus you have found holy rest the psalmist says I will praise you Lord with all my heart I will sing your praise I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness for you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame when I called you answered me you greatly emboldened me may all the kings of the earth praise you Lord when they hear what you have decreed may they sing of the ways of the Lord for the glory of the Lord is great though the Lord is exalted he looks kindly on the lowly though lofty he sees them from afar though I walk in the midst of trouble you preserve my life you stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes with your right hand you save me the Lord will vindicate me your love Lord endures forever do not abandon the works of your hands loving Abba our dear loving Heavenly Father I want to thank you for loving this precious one so much that you sent your son to die on a cross so that your child might live with you forever I pray that deep restful sleep comes over the next several hours thank you father for the innumerable ways that you demonstrate your love protection and provision 
I pray that you will bring sweet dreams of your goodness sweet dreams and strength and energy for a new day in the name of Jesus I pray amen the psalmist expresses his love for the Lord because God hears and answers his children when they call to him throughout the Psalms he recalls the many troubles and sorrows he has already encountered and how gracious and compassionate the Lord has been to him the Lord heard his cry and the Lord rescued him in the 138th Psalm David expresses gratitude to God this psalm helps us focus on the Lord's goodness I will praise you O Lord with all my heart I sing your praise I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness for you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame when I called you answered me you greatly emboldened me may all the kings of the earth praise you Lord when they hear what you have decreed may they sing of the ways of the Lord for the glory of the Lord is great though the Lord is exalted he looks kindly on the lowly though lofty he sees them from afar though I walk in the midst of trouble you preserve my life you stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes with your right hand you save me the Lord will vindicate me your love O Lord endures forever do not abandon the works of your hands as you snuggle further into your bed your body sinks deeper into your mattress may God bring you holy rest imagine yourself outdoors on a warm and pleasant day you're standing near a pond of water that is calm and clear the surface smooth as the evening hours draw nigh the night sky provides a covering for your holy rest crickets begin to chirp alerting you that it's time for sleep the fading Sun is warm on your face the sunlight casts a peaceful palette of colors that dance across the shining surface of the water there is not another person in sight you slowly reach down and pick up a flat stone just like when you were a child you sidearm toss the stone across the water amazingly it skips not one two or three times but nearly a dozen you haven't lost your touch the water is so calm the stone hardly causes a ripple that same calm of the pond comes over you sending soothing and cleansing trickles of relaxation down from the top of your head 
in every direction to soothe heal and cleanse every muscle and cell of your body you continue to gaze at this pond nestled in among the tall pine trees just outside a mountain village this pond of water its peace causes you to become calm and restful you turn away from the pond and follow a little pathway that takes you to a perfect place a place where you can be by yourself and feel calm and comfortable and rest under a tall tree others have been here before you because you spot a fire circle near where you're sitting the smooth stone surrounding ash from previous fires like sentinels stacks of kindling and wood stand nearby you put your youthful skills to work again to start a small fire within just a few minutes the dry kindling glows bright igniting the larger pieces of wood the tall tree and its piney aroma ah, make the perfect spot to find holy rest your tensions begin to melt away the busyness of city life you hear the sound that surrounds you there's bullfrogs night birds chirping the crackling of the fire stirred by a gentle cooling breeze eventually amongst the bird calls you hear a gentle voice singing a beautiful song it seems to be coming from the trees you hold very still as you listen the words coming to you gently on the breeze I have loved you with an everlasting love the voice sings with unfailing love I have drawn you to myself your heart sings with this sweet voice as it continues the Lord is good to all he has compassion on all he has made as you search the woods with your eyes for the bearer of that voice you see a figure dressed all in white emerge from the woods you have no fear because the words of their song have filled your heart with joy and peace as the figure walks towards you the singing continues the words for the Lord is good and his love endures forever his faithfulness continues through all generations finally they are close enough for you to recognize it's Jesus he comes closer still singing of his love for you and he sits beside you to the fire your heart bursts with joy your Savior and Lord is here by your side you sing in response sovereign Lord you are good your covenant is trustworthy and you have promised these good things to your servant the sweet dialogue between you continues with his words and your response as you sit side by side in perfect peace he says taste and see that the Lord is good oh blessed is the one who takes refuge in him 
you respond the Lord is good a refuge in times of trouble he cares for those who trust in him Jesus smiles into your eyes your beloved brother your Savior your friend your heart exults in God your Savior you close your eyes listening to his words over you but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint for I know the plans I have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you he will never leave you nor forsake you do not be afraid do not be discouraged you lean into Jesus as he continues to sing and your eyes grow heavy you find yourself falling asleep deeply soundly peacefully as the Lord places his arm around you you know you're safe you know you're loved this is holy rest in the arms of Jesus as your breathing gets deeper and your eyes grow heavier through your encounter with Jesus you have found holy rest the psalmist says I will praise you Lord with all my heart I will sing your praise I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness for you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame when I called you answered me you greatly emboldened me may all the kings of the earth praise you Lord when they hear what you have decreed may they sing of the ways of the Lord for the glory of the Lord is great though the Lord is exalted he looks kindly on the lowly though lofty he sees them from afar though I walk in the midst of trouble you preserve my life you stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes with your right hand you save me the Lord will vindicate me your love Lord endures forever Do not abandon the works of your hands loving Abba our dear loving Heavenly Father I want to thank you for loving this precious one so much that you sent your son to die on a cross so that your child might live with you forever I pray that deep restful sleep comes over the next several hours thank you father for the innumerable ways that you demonstrate your love protection and provision I pray that you will bring sweet dreams of your goodness sweet dreams and strength and energy for a new day 
In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Instead of your mind being filled with anxiety, you will be encouraged to think about the things that are true and lovely, honorable and pure, excellent and worthy of praise. Let God speak to your heart as you hear his word. So settle deeply into your bed. Let your head rest heavily on your pillow as you relax every muscle in your body. Take a deep, slow breath. Hold it for a moment and then release it, feeling the tension of your day fade away. Feel the comfort of your warm covers, the peacefulness of this moment. Don't let in any distractions. Tell them to go away. This is your time to be with the Lord as he guides you into deep sleep without worry or concern. Keep breathing deeply and slowly as you listen, letting your body ease into sleep. Father God, I bring this child of yours before you today and ask you for your favor. I already know that you love them deeply, and I ask that you would give them that assurance as well. I pray that as they sleep, their dreams would be of those things that are honorable and lovely and worthy of praise. Keep away all distractions, concerns, and stresses so that they can rest peacefully. May the sound of my voice telling them of the wonders of you and your world lull them quickly into sleep that lasts the whole night through and is refreshing and rejuvenating. I ask these things knowing that your desire is for them to live abundantly in you. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Your purpose on this earth is to enjoy God and to serve him forever, to dwell on his excellent greatness, to fill your mind and heart with his word. Anything else you are given to do will be fueled by these things. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 in the Amplified Bible says, Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Your time tonight will be spent letting your mind dwell on these things. First, here are some things that are true, told by the scriptures. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. All things, that's a promise. God will work all things together for good. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just. That's who God is. If he says he will do something, you can be sure that he will do it. If you have confessed your sins, you are cleansed from all unrighteousness. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. O oh, beloved, rest in that truth. He loves you so much. Lord God, your word is trustworthy. 
Let this precious child dwell on these things as they sleep tonight. Write them on their heart. Bind your truths to them so they live and breathe them day in and day out. Let them hear only words of truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Now let those things that are honorable dwell in your mind. Let's turn to the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew chapter 5 to see behavior that is honorable to God. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Let these honorable things dwell in your thoughts. Jesus, you don't ask us to do anything that you don't then enable us to do. So as this child of yours thinks about doing honorable things, help them to know that they are not doing them alone in their own strength, but by the power and might of your Holy Spirit dwelling within them. And we will thank you and praise you for that power. In your name, amen. Let your mind dwell on that which is just. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 18. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. And chapter 32, verse 4 of that same book. The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice a God of faithfulness and without iniquity. Just and upright is he. Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. God is a God of justice. It is in his very nature to be just. Let your mind dwell on these things. Lord God, Thank you for your justice, that we can always know that you will do the right thing, whether we see it today or years from today. We can trust that you will follow through on your word. Help this child of yours tonight as they dwell on your justice. Give them hope and courage in the name of Jesus. Amen. Think about those things that are pure. Psalm 12, verse 6, is a perfect place to start. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. Let the words of God fill your dreams as you hear Him speak to you. His words are pure. Psalm 19, verse 8, the precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart 
and a good conscience and a sincere faith. When the temple of God was being built, everything was to be made of those things that were pure. There were to be no impurities in the temple. Now you are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. Dwell on the Lord and keep your heart pure. Holy Lord, there is nothing pure aside from you. So I pray that his beloved child listening tonight will guard their heart from all impurities as they dwell on your word that is true, just, and pure. Thank you for promising them your strength. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Here is what God considers lovely that you should dwell on it. Psalm 84, verse 1. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who announces peace and brings good news of happiness, who announces salvation, and says to Zion, Your God reigns. Maybe you've thought about the fact that the feet of those who bring the news of Jesus are lovely, but they are. Dwell on those messengers, on those who proclaim the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Jesus, you are the Messiah. You are the Savior of the world, and those who would speak about you to others are lovely to dwell on. I pray that this precious one listening tonight will be one who has the lovely feet of a messenger of your gospel. Grant them peace as they dwell on the loveliness of your dwelling and the telling of the good news in your name. Amen. In the New Testament, the early church fathers were directed to appoint people who had good reputations. They were devoted to the Lord and to their families. They were ones who were worthy of being looked up to. They would fulfill their duties in the church well. Proverbs 22 verse 1 says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 9 through 10 describes a widow who could be given help by the church. It says, Let a widow be enrolled if she is not less than 60 years of age, having been the wife of one husband and having a reputation for good works. If she has brought up children, has shown hospitality, has washed the feet of the saints, has cared for the afflicted, and has devoted herself to every good work, let your mind dwell on what it's like to know a person such as this. Loves to serve others, is hospitable, cares for the afflicted. Let the peace such a person brings envelop your heart. Father, we praise you for your gifts that allow us to serve others and to serve you. I ask your blessing on this beloved child as they sleep tonight that you would bring to their mind that which is of good repute, that they would dwell on that and not on those who do not honor you. It's all for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Here is what is excellent and should fill your thoughts. Psalm 150, verse 2. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Titus chapter 3 verse 8 the saying is trustworthy and I want you to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works these things are excellent and profitable for people Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 but as it is Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old 
as the covenant he mediates is better, since it is enacted on better promises. Excellent greatness, excellent works, a more excellent covenant. Think upon these things. Dear Heavenly Father, there is so much excellence in your name, in your character, in your mighty works. Help this loved one tonight to dwell on the excellent greatness of your name and the excellent ministry of our Lord Jesus as they rest in you tonight. It's in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. And now we will close with the words of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 11 through 13, which tells us why the Lord Jesus, above all else, is worthy of praise. Then I looked, and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them say, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen and amen. Sleep in peace, dear one, dwelling on the things of God. Instead of your mind being filled with anxiety, you will be encouraged to think about the things that are true and lovely, honorable and pure, excellent and worthy of praise. Let God speak to your heart as you hear his word. So settle deeply into your bed. Let your head rest heavily on your pillow as you relax every muscle in your body. Take a deep, slow breath. Hold it for a moment and then release it, feeling the tension of your day fade away. Feel the comfort of your warm covers, the peacefulness of this moment. Don't let in any distractions. Tell them to go away. This is your time to be with the Lord as he guides you into deep sleep without worry or concern. Keep breathing deeply and slowly as you listen, letting your body ease into sleep. Father God, I bring this child of yours before you today and ask you for your favor. I already know that you love them deeply, and I ask that you would give them that assurance as well. I pray that as they sleep, their dreams would be of those things that are honorable and lovely and worthy of praise. Keep away all distractions, concerns, and stresses so that they can rest peacefully. May the sound of my voice telling them of the wonders of you and your world lull them quickly into sleep that lasts the whole night through and is refreshing and rejuvenating. I ask these things knowing that your desire is for them to live abundantly in you. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Your purpose on this earth is to enjoy God and to serve Him forever, to dwell on His excellent greatness, to fill your mind and heart with His Word. Anything else you are given to do will be fueled by these things. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 in the Amplified Bible says, Finally, believers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, 
If there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Your time tonight will be spent letting your mind dwell on these things. First, here are some things that are true, told by the scriptures. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. All things, that's a promise. God will work all things together for good. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just. That's who God is. If he says he will do something, you can be sure that he will do it. If you have confessed your sins, you are cleansed from all unrighteousness. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. O oh, beloved, rest in that truth. He loves you so much. Lord God, your word is trustworthy. Let this precious child dwell on these things as they sleep tonight. Write them on their heart. Bind your truths to them so they live and breathe them day in and day out. Let them hear only words of truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Now let those things that are honorable dwell in your mind. Let's turn to the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew chapter 5 to see behavior that is honorable to God. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Let these honorable things dwell in your thoughts. Jesus, you don't ask us to do anything that you don't then enable us to do. So as this child of yours thinks about doing honorable things, help them to know that they are not doing them alone in their own strength, but by the power and might of your Holy Spirit dwelling within them. And we will thank you and praise you for that power. In your name, amen. Let your mind dwell on that which is just. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 18. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. And chapter 32, verse 4 of that same book, The Rock, 
His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. God is a God of justice. It is in his very nature to be just. Let your mind dwell on these things. Lord God, thank you for your justice. That we can always know that you will do the right thing. Whether we see it today or years from today, we can trust that you will follow through on your word. Help this child of yours tonight as they dwell on your justice. Give them hope and courage in the name of Jesus. Amen. Think about those things that are pure. Psalm 12, verse 6 is a perfect place to start. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. Let the words of God fill your dreams as you hear him speak to you. His words are pure. Psalm 19, verse 8. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. When the temple of God was being built, everything was to be made of those things that were pure. There were to be no impurities in the temple. Now you are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. Dwell on the Lord and keep your heart pure. Holy Lord, there is nothing pure aside from you. So I pray that his beloved child listening tonight will guard their heart from all impurities as they dwell on your word that is true, just, and pure. Thank you for promising them your strength. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Here is what God considers lovely, that you should dwell on it. Psalm 84, verse 1. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who announces peace and brings good news of happiness, who announces salvation and says to Zion, your God reigns. Maybe you've thought about the fact that the feet of those who bring the news of Jesus are lovely. But they are. Dwell on those messengers, on those who proclaim the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Jesus, you are the Messiah. You are the Savior of the world and those who would speak about you to others are lovely to dwell on. I pray that this precious one listening tonight will be one who has the lovely feet of a messenger of your gospel. Grant them peace as they dwell on the loveliness of your dwelling and the telling of the good news in your name. Amen. In the New Testament, the early church fathers were directed to appoint people who had good reputations. They were devoted to the Lord and to their families. They were ones who were worthy of being looked up to. They would fulfill their duties in the church well. Proverbs 22 verse 1 says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 9 through 10, describes a widow who could be given help by the church. It says, 
Let a widow be enrolled if she is not less than 60 years of age, having been the wife of one husband and having a reputation for good works. If she has brought up children, has shown hospitality, has washed the feet of the saints, has cared for the afflicted, and has devoted herself to every good work. Let your mind dwell on what it's like to know a person such as this, loves to serve others, is hospitable, cares for the afflicted. Let the peace such a person brings envelop your heart. Father, we praise you for your gifts that allow us to serve others and to serve you. I ask your blessing on this beloved child as they sleep tonight. That you would bring to their mind that which is of good repute, that they would dwell on that and not on those who do not honor you. It's all for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Here is what is excellent and should fill your thoughts. Psalm 150, verse 2. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Titus chapter 3, verse 8. The saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. But as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old, as the covenant he mediates is better, since it is enacted on better promises. Excellent greatness, excellent works, a more excellent covenant. Think upon these things. Dear Heavenly Father, there is so much excellence in your name, in your character, in your mighty works. Help this loved one tonight to dwell on the excellent greatness of your name and the excellent ministry of our Lord Jesus as they rest in you tonight. It's in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. And now we will close with the words of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 11 through 13, which tells us why the Lord Jesus, above all else, is worthy of praise. Then I looked, and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them say, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen and amen. Sleep in peace, dear one, dwelling on the things of God. Do you know how God sees you? You are very precious to him. Be encouraged and meditate on that as we wind down. You are a child of God. And like any parent, God views you as one of the most precious things he has. He loves you so much. Isaiah 49:16 says, "Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me." You are engraved on God's hands. Let that thought permeate your body as you settle down to sleep. 
Relax. And close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Feel different parts of your body switching off. Relax your toes and feet. Focus on your legs. Let tension dissolve away. Feel your lower back and abdominal muscles just switching off. Now your chest and upper back. Feel all the tension melt away. Let your shoulders, arms, hands, and fingers relax and shut down. Finally, your face, eyes, and mouth. Relax them and find yourself starting to drift off. Father, thank you for being our Heavenly Father. We thank you for your love and encouragement. Lord, let this child of yours feel your presence right now. Jesus, there may be times that they don't feel loved or wanted, but it's in those times that they need to be reminded about what you say about them. You say that they are loved. You say that they are precious in your sight. You say that they are yours. Lord, teach them to only care about what you say about them and not what other people say about them. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Now, imagine yourself sitting on a very busy downtown street. You're blind, so you can't see what's going on around you. But the crowd is overwhelming. Your voice cannot be heard. There are so many people walking on the sidewalk that you're constantly being bumped into. The sounds, the smells, the dust, the clamor. Every day, it's the same. You keep asking and begging for someone, anyone, to give you just a little bit of money so you can eat. You hear no friendly words. You feel no friendly touch. In fact, you can hear some talking about you unkindly. Maybe thinking because that you can't see. You can't hear. All of a sudden, you hear someone shout, There he is! Everybody immediately starts to surge toward this individual. You have no idea who they are all wanting to see. You try and ask people who is there, but no one answers you. Then you hear someone say, There's Jesus! You've heard of this man. His amazing teaching, his miracles. Oh, his miracles. The thought flits through your mind that maybe Jesus could help you. Oh, he's helped so many others. But then reality sets in and the hope drains from you. You've been tossed aside so many times. Why would Jesus even pay any attention to you? You just sit there, 
try to listen to what's going on. Just then, you hear someone call out to you. Did you hear that right? Did someone say your name? And then, and then you hear it again. Softer. Closer. Gentler. Not since your father spoke to you as a child have you heard your name said in that way. So, so lovingly. All other noise has stopped. It's as if you're in a cave. No one around you moves or speaks. It's Jesus. You don't know how you know, but you know. It's Jesus. And he has found you. You feel his hand on your forehead. You, you hear his gentle voice. And all of a sudden, the darkness that has always enveloped you starts to grow thinner. Light begins to break through. And your eyes begin to focus. And you find yourself looking directly into Jesus' eyes. And Jesus is looking directly at you. And you feel more love coming from him than you have ever felt in your entire life. Imagine being blind your whole life. And then miraculously being healed. Imagine being overlooked, ridiculed, and then suddenly loved beyond your wildest imagination. Out of all the others on the street that day that he could have stopped for, Jesus chose you. Maybe you felt the way that the blind man felt. That people ignore you and you feel that you're not worthy of love. Maybe you've been suffering with an ailment and you feel that God has forgotten you. But the truth is this. You are worth everything in the eyes of Jesus. And he wants what is best for you. Listen to John 3 1 from the Amplified Bible. See what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us. That we would be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. And so we are. For this reason, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. God calls us his children so that we can get a glimpse, an idea of what our relationship with him should be. truth is there's no way we can totally grasp just how much he loves each of us it's too vast and wide it's immeasurable unchanging never-ending did you hear that never ending he will always love you We are all so precious to him. Webster's Dictionary defines the word precious as something of great value, 
not to be wasted or treated carelessly. That's how God views you. You have value. You are not to be wasted or treated carelessly. Maybe you feel like you've done so many wrong things in your life that God doesn't love you. That couldn't be more wrong. God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you. Perhaps you've seen the verse John 3:16 on a sign in the end zone of a football game along the side of the road on a billboard but let's take a closer look at that verse in the New Living Translation for this is how God loved the world he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life God did that for everyone meaning no matter what you've done in your life God still loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you you're precious to him Jesus loved telling stories in Luke 15 11 through 32 in the New Living Translation he tells the story of the prodigal son to demonstrate God's love for us even when you mess up in sin and don't feel worthy of God's love this story explains how God views you listen to this parable a man had two sons the younger son told his father I want my share of your estate now before you die so his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons a few days later this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land and there he wasted all his money and wild living about the time his money ran out a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve he persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs the young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him but no one gave him anything when he finally came to his senses he said to himself at home even the hired servants have food enough to spare and here I am dying of hunger I will go home to my father and say father I have sinned against both heaven and you and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son please take me on as a hired servant So he returned home to his father and while he was still a long way off his father saw him coming filled with love and compassion he ran to his son embraced him and kissed him his son said to him father I have sinned against both heaven and you and I am no longer worthy of being called your son but his father said to his servants quick bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening we must celebrate with a feast 
for this son of mine was dead and is now returned to life he was lost but now he is found so the party began meanwhile the older son was in the fields working when he returned home he heard music and dancing in the house and he asked one of the servants what was going on your brother is back he was told and your father has killed the fattened calf we are celebrating because of his safe return the older brother was angry and wouldn't go in his father came out and begged him but he replied all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do and in all that time you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes you celebrate by killing the fattened calf his father said to him look dear son you've always stayed with me and everything I have is yours we had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life he was lost but now he is found God is telling you right now that he loves you you are so precious to him no matter how much you've sinned God is still waiting for you to come back to him now sleep in confidence knowing that you are loved and are precious to God let's pray oh dear father thank you for loving us thank you for your grace and mercy I ask now that you would come and comfort your child as they sleep tonight may the Lord bless them and protect them may the Lord smile on them and be gracious to them may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace amen now rest in his loving arms now imagine yourself sitting on a very busy downtown street you're blind so you can't see what's going on around you but the crowd is overwhelming your voice cannot be heard there are so many people walking on the sidewalk that you're constantly being bumped into the sounds the smells the dust the clamor every day it's the same you keep asking and begging for someone anyone to give you just a little bit of money so you can eat you hear no friendly words you feel no friendly touch in fact you can hear some talking about you unkindly maybe thinking because that you can't see you can't hear all of a sudden you hear someone shout there he is everybody immediately starts to surge toward this individual you have no idea who they're all wanting to see 
You try and ask people who is there, but no one answers you. Then you hear someone say, there's Jesus. You've heard of this man. His amazing teaching, his miracles. Oh, his miracles. The thought flits through your mind that maybe Jesus could help you. Oh, he's helped so many others. But then reality sets in and the hope drains from you you've been tossed aside so many times why would Jesus even pay any attention to you you just sit there try to listen to what's going on just then you hear someone call out to you did you hear that right did someone say your name and then and then you hear it again softer closer gentler not since your father spoke to you as a child have you heard your name said in that way so so lovingly all other noise has stopped it's as if you're in a cave no one around you moves or speaks it's Jesus you don't know how you know but you know it's Jesus and he has found you you feel his hand on your forehead you you hear his gentle voice and all of a sudden the darkness that has always enveloped you starts to grow thinner light begins to break through and your eyes begin to focus and you find yourself looking directly into Jesus's eyes and Jesus is looking directly at you and you feel more love coming from him than you have ever felt in your entire life imagine being blind your whole life and then miraculously being healed imagine being overlooked ridiculed and then suddenly loved beyond your wildest imagination out of all the others on the street that day that he could have stopped for Jesus chose you maybe you felt the way that the blind man felt that people ignore you and you feel that you're not worthy of love maybe you've been suffering with an ailment and you feel that God has forgotten you but the truth is this you are worth everything in the eyes of Jesus and he wants what is best for you listen to John 3 1 from the Amplified Bible see what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us that we would be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God and so we are for this reason the world does not know us because it did not know him 
God calls us his children so that we can get a glimpse an idea of what our relationship with him should be truth is there's no way we can totally grasp just how much he loves each of us it's too vast and wide it's immeasurable unchanging never-ending did you hear that never ending he will always love you we are all so precious to him Webster's dictionary defines the word precious as something of great value not to be wasted or treated carelessly that's how God views you you have value you are not to be wasted or treated carelessly maybe you feel like you've done so many wrong things in your life that God doesn't love you that couldn't be more wrong God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you perhaps you've seen the verse John 3 16 on a sign in the end zone of a football game along the side of the road on a billboard but let's take a closer look at that verse in the New Living Translation for this is how God loved the world he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life God did that for everyone meaning no matter what you've done in your life God still loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you you're precious to him Jesus loved telling stories in Luke 15 11 through 32 in the New Living Translation he tells the story of the prodigal son to demonstrate God's love for us even when you mess up in sin and don't feel worthy of God's love this story explains how God views you listen to this parable a man had two sons the younger son told his father I want my share of your estate now before you die so his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons a few days later this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land and there he wasted all his money and wild living about the time his money ran out a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve he persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs the young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him but no one gave him anything when he finally came to his senses he said to himself at home even the hired servants have food enough to spare and here I am dying of hunger I will go home to my father and say father I have sinned against both heaven and you and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son please take me on as a hired servant so 
So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to his servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and is now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house, and he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him, but he replied, All these years I've slaved for you, and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you've always stayed with me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day, for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. God is telling you right now that he loves you you are so precious to him no matter how much you've sinned God is still waiting for you to come back to him now sleep in confidence knowing that you are loved and are precious to God. Let's pray. Oh, dear Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your grace and mercy. I ask now that you would come and comfort your child as they sleep tonight. May the Lord bless them and protect them. May the Lord smile on them and be gracious to them. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Now rest in his loving arms. Tonight I'll share a story on the Beatitudes from the book of Matthew the fifth chapter. In this well-known passage of Scripture, Jesus lists eight Beatitudes that bring His children peace and joy, eight Beatitudes that bring His children blessings. While Jesus wants His children to be happy, He desires us even more to find joy. He's teaching us how to find it. Before we begin, let your eyes gently shut. 
relax. The day is over. It's time to rest. Put the troubles of today behind you and look forward to the blessings of God. Get comfortable. Let your head sink into the soft pillow. Stretch out your legs. Breathe in God's peace and breathe out your worries. You are God's child. He loves you. He is watching over you. Accept his peace and protection as I pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this child of yours. Thank you for their heart for you. Thank you for their desire to know you more. Thank you for their talents and for their many gifts. I ask that you will bless this child of yours with your peace, with your presence, with your love. I ask that you will give them peaceful dreams. Father, we know that sleep is a blessing. Thank you for rest. Thank you for giving us a time to slow down, unwind, and focus on you and your word. I ask that you will protect them and refresh them for a new day. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Now, imagine you are one of Jesus' disciples. You have been walking from town to town under the hot Galilean sun, watching him heal the sick and preach the good news. Just the other day, he healed someone with paralysis. Then he healed someone with seizures. Then he drove out a demon. You've been a disciple only a short while but you're astonished at what he has done. No one has ever seen anyone like him. It's like something straight out of, well, the book of Exodus. It's common for a stranger to approach you and ask, is Jesus the Messiah? But as Jesus' ministry has grown in popularity, the crowds have grown too. So much so that hundreds, perhaps thousands, often follow him. People from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan often crowd around Jesus and around you too. Sure, it's a blessing. But Jesus has had very little time alone with you and the other disciples lately. And now another large crowd is approaching, far off in the distance. Then Jesus speaks. Let's climb this hill to get away from the crowds for a while, he says to you and the others. I have a few things I've been wanting to tell you. It's a warm day in Galilee, but there is a cool breeze blowing off the lake below. The light wind feels great on your skin as you and the others follow Jesus up the grassy hill. You take a peek back at the lake. Two fishermen are casting their net into the water. Across the lake, two more fishermen are pushing their small wooden boat into the lake. You fished at that lake many times, but you're glad you are with Jesus today. You're glad he asked you to be with him. You remember what he told you. Come, follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. You take in the unique smell of moisture in the air. You also enjoy the scent of colorful wildflowers below your feet, white and blue and yellow and red. Then, Jesus stops walking. 
This looks like a good place to talk, he says. It's a beautiful, scenic spot on the side of the hill. Several large boulders surround you. The grass is a lush green. Flowers are abundant. Jesus sits down, high above everyone. This will allow you and the others to hear his voice. You sit down on an area near him. Jesus surveys the disciples, making sure everyone made it up the hill. He looks at the others, then he looks at you, then at the others again. He begins speaking. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. It's been 30 minutes since Jesus spoke. He is high on the hill, talking alone with Peter. You and the others are further down the hill, talking to one another. It's a bit windier now, but the fishermen are still on the lake below. Two of them are pulling up their net, filled with a big catch. You think back to your fishing days, but mostly, you think back to what Jesus just said. His message was different than anything you've ever heard. It was countercultural. It was radical. But it was so, so wonderful, too. He promised you mercy. He promised you comfort. He said you would be called a child of God. He even said you would inherit the earth and be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. Blessed, he said, are those who are poor in spirit, those who see themselves fully dependent on God and not themselves. Blessed, he said, are those who mourn. Blessed, he said, are the meek and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed, he said, are those who are merciful. Blessed, he said, are the peacemakers. He even said you would be blessed if you are persecuted. You and another disciple, Andrew, begin talking. Andrew fears some disciples may leave Jesus because of his message. You agree with him, but you and Andrew pledge devotion to Christ. Then you see Jesus coming your way. He stops and begins talking to you. You share your thoughts about his sermon with him. He smiles, looks away for a moment, and then looks back at you. I will be with you, he says. I will help you. I will give you the strength to persevere. Remember, I love you. He hugs you. As Jesus begins walking down the hill, your mind turns to the words of the psalmist. It's one of the passages your family taught you growing up. It comforted you as a child and as an adult too. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord 
and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Jesus loves you. He wants what is best for you. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be filled with joy. He wants you to have peace. Like a loving shepherd watching his sheep, the all-powerful, all-knowing God of the universe is watching over you right now. He's right beside you. Take comfort. Let me pray for you. Dear God, thank you for this child. Thank you for this time to relax and meditate on your word. Thank you for sleep. Father, I ask that you will grant them patience and peace. I ask that you bless them with wonderful dreams. I ask that you will give them a great night's sleep so they will wake up refreshed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesus is the Good Shepherd. You are His sheep. Accept His promises. Trust His protection. Rest in His presence. In this well-known passage of Scripture, Jesus lists eight Beatitudes that bring His children peace and joy, eight Beatitudes that bring His children blessings. While Jesus wants His children to be happy, He desires us even more to find joy. He's teaching us how to find it. Before we begin, let your eyes gently shut. Relax. The day is over. It's time to rest. Put the troubles of today behind you and look forward to the blessings of God. Get comfortable. Let your head sink into the soft pillow. Stretch out your legs. Breathe in God's peace and breathe out your worries. You are God's child. He loves you. He is watching over you. Accept his peace and protection as I pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this child of yours. Thank you for their heart for you. Thank you for their desire to know you more. Thank you for their talents and for their many gifts. I ask that you will bless this child of yours with your peace, with your presence, with your love. I ask that you will give them peaceful dreams. Father, we know that sleep is a blessing. Thank you for rest. Thank you for giving us the time to slow down, unwind, and focus on you and your word. I ask that you will protect them and refresh them for a new day. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Now, imagine you are one of Jesus' disciples. You have been walking from town to town under the hot Galilean sun, watching him heal the sick and preach the good news. Just the other day, he healed someone with paralysis. Then he healed someone with seizures. 
Then he drove out a demon. You've been a disciple only a short while, but you're astonished at what he has done. No one has ever seen anyone like him. It's like something straight out of, well, the book of Exodus. It's common for a stranger to approach you and ask, is Jesus the Messiah? But as Jesus' ministry has grown in popularity, the crowds have grown too. So much so that hundreds, perhaps thousands, often follow him. People from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan often crowd around Jesus and around you too. Sure, it's a blessing. But Jesus has had very little time alone with you and the other disciples lately. And now another large crowd is approaching, far off in the distance. Then Jesus speaks. Let's climb this hill to get away from the crowds for a while, he says to you and the others. I have a few things I've been wanting to tell you. It's a warm day in Galilee, but there is a cool breeze blowing off the lake below. The light wind feels great on your skin as you and the others follow Jesus up the grassy hill. You take a peek back at the lake. Two fishermen are casting their net into the water. Across the lake, two more fishermen are pushing their small wooden boat into the lake. You've fished at that lake many times, but you're glad you are with Jesus today. You're glad he asked you to be with him. You remember what he told you. Come, follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. You take in the unique smell of moisture in the air. You also enjoy the scent of colorful wildflowers below your feet white and blue and yellow and red. Then Jesus stops walking. This looks like a good place to talk, he says. It's a beautiful scenic spot on the side of the hill. Several large boulders surround you. The grass is a lush green. Flowers are abundant. Jesus sits down, high above everyone. This will allow you and the others to hear his voice. You sit down on an area near him. Jesus surveys the disciples, making sure everyone made it up the hill. He looks at the others, then he looks at you, then at the others again. He begins speaking. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. It's been 30 minutes since Jesus spoke. He is high on the hill, talking alone with Peter. You and the others are further down the hill, talking to one another. It's a bit windier now 
but the fishermen are still on the lake below. Two of them are pulling up their net, filled with a big catch. You think back to your fishing days, but mostly you think back to what Jesus just said. His message was different than anything you've ever heard. It was countercultural. It was radical. But it was so, so wonderful, too. He promised you mercy. He promised you comfort. He said you would be called a child of God. He even said you would inherit the earth and be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. Blessed, he said, are those who are poor in spirit, those who see themselves fully dependent on God and not themselves. Blessed, he said, are those who mourn. Blessed, he said, are the meek and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed, he said, are those who are merciful. Blessed, he said, are the peacemakers. He even said you would be blessed if you are persecuted. You and another disciple, Andrew, begin talking. Andrew fears some disciples may leave Jesus because of his message. You agree with him, but you and Andrew pledge devotion to Christ. Then you see Jesus coming your way. He stops and begins talking to you. You share your thoughts about his sermon with him. He smiles, looks away for a moment, and then looks back at you. I will be with you, he says. I will help you. I will give you the strength to persevere. Remember, I love you. He hugs you. As Jesus begins walking down the hill, your mind turns to the words of the psalmist. It's one of the passages your family taught you growing up. It comforted you as a child and as an adult too. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Jesus loves you. He wants what is best for you. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be filled with joy. He wants you to have peace. Like a loving shepherd watching his sheep, the all-powerful, all-knowing God of the universe is watching over you right now. He's right beside you. Take comfort. Let me pray for you. Dear God, thank you for this child. Thank you for this time to relax and meditate on your word. Thank you for sleep. Father, I ask that you will grant them patience and peace. I ask that you bless them with wonderful dreams. I ask that you will give them a great night's sleep so they will wake up refreshed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesus is the Good Shepherd. You are his sheep. Accept his promises. Trust his protection. Rest in his presence. Allow these waters to wash you, ending a day, giving yourself 
to sleep, resting in God's love. This is sacred, holy, precious. As you are being washed, you are more and more free to be near God, to enjoy His presence, to trust in His watchful care. Rest. Sleep. Believe, allowing these words deeper into your heart and mind. I will be with you. See the burning bush of God's presence speaking goodness into your heart. Rehearse this good news in your breath, breathing in, saying to your soul, you are with me and then also breathing out pray meditate and trust saying again you are with me Moses's life had been strange messy and confusing when he came of age he began to sort out the things that mattered most to his life. He understood in deeper ways that he was an alien and a stranger in the house of Pharaoh. He was a Hebrew, one of the oppressed. Benefiting from the riches of the oppressor was troubling. How could he enjoy any good thing when his own people were enslaved? working tirelessly for the brutal king of Egypt. When he saw an Egyptian beating one of his Hebrew brothers one day, he was given a chance to prove his identity as an Israelite. In a fit of rage and vindication, he killed the Egyptian, hid the body in the sand, and then fled into the desert to hide from Pharaoh's wrath. Years later, Moses had married, raised a family, and was working for his father-in-law, Jethro, tending sheep on the backside of Mount Horeb. Moses was no doubt content to be removed and hidden from his previous life as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He had no expectation that God had any special plans for his life. He had no idea that his life was about to change. There on the backside of Mount Horeb, this was a wilderness place where God spoke to Moses in a burning bush. You likely have not experienced a literal burning bush, but you have had some kind of burning bush experience. This would be that turning point when you came to accept the truth of God in a way that changed the direction of your life. This would be a moment when he especially revealed himself through a person, an experience, maybe a worship service, a time when you were serving someone, perhaps a time of prayer, or even a powerful sermon. Something shifted inside of you, and you haven't been the same since. You might protest here, but I haven't taken God as seriously as I should. My life hasn't changed that much. I still struggle. I still don't know how to trust God with my life. I continue to resist him each day. I live more through my strength than God's love. Moses protested too. He said, Who am I that you would speak to me? He worried about his weaknesses. 
I can't speak for you. I stutter when I open my mouth. Moses would drift away from God too. He would become impatient and angry with the people he was leading. He would continue to struggle with fear and doubt. Even still, God says to Moses, I will be with you. And God still says to you, I will be with you. No matter how much doubt or fear that stir inside of you, God still says, I will be with you. No matter how much stubbornness and anger, God still says, I will be with you. Once again, place yourself before the burning bush of God's presence. Rest. Sleep. Believe these words deeper into your heart and mind. I will be with you. Rehearse this good news in your breath. Breathing in, saying to your soul, My God is with me. And then also breathing out, pray, meditate, and trust, saying again, My God is with me. As we bring this meditation to a close, I invite you to consider one more part of Moses' story. God instructs Moses to say to Pharaoh, Let my people go. Moses fusses. But how can I go back? How can I speak for you? Why would the king of Egypt listen to me? God replies, Tell Pharaoh that I am sent you. I am. The great I am is with you. The great I am sends you. He is the true, true. He is the real, real. God is being behind and before all other things. He is the one by whom everything else in the universe was created. He is the one in whom all things hold together and have their being. The great I am says to you tonight, I am with you. I am the being who will always be with you. In peace, give yourself to sleep. Rest in God's faithfulness, for He alone can make you dwell in safety. May the Lord bless you and protect you as you sleep. May His face shine upon you like the radiance of a burning bush. May He be gracious and kind, granting you deep, healing sleep. May you be filled with peace. Continue to allow yourself to let go of today by rehearsing in your breathing in and breathing out. My God is with me. My God is with me. My God is with me. Amen. God speaks the words for you tonight that he spoke to Moses. I will be with you. He wants these words to burn bright and clear before you like the fire that burned before Moses. 
he wants his words to break through your darkness to penetrate deep into your inner being to grow in you confidence and love God is a blazing fire of goodness warmth and hope yet it is often difficult for us to see him and to hear his faithful words I will be with you these were words that Moses had trouble hearing and trusting too. his life before the burning bush had been strange and messy nothing about his life made it obvious that God would choose him to lead his people out of slavery to freedom he was the baby sent down the river in a basket a Hebrew raised in the palace of the Egyptian king Moses was a murderer who hid in the desert if there had been a job opening for hero of the Israelites Moses would not have had a strong resume to our minds Moses was an unlikely leader yet God blesses he embraces he uses unlikely people Moses doubted himself he doubted God too he was lost in the desert in the despair of his terrible mistakes and even still God says to him Moses I will be with you and God will be with you too God is with you your life doesn't need to make sense to you or to others your life can be messy and strange and even still God says to you I will be with you allow these words deeper into your heart and mind I will be with you rehearse this good news in your breath allow the burning fire of God's voice to shine into your darkness by breathing in and saying to your soul God is with me and then also breathing out pray meditate and trust saying again God is with me when I say Moses's life was strange and messy I mean that his life did not move in a nice clear clean straight line his life's journey had many twists and turns many layers of confusion and suffering his mother took a papyrus basket and covered it with tar and pitch so that it would float she placed Moses as a baby inside and set the basket among the reeds of the Nile a wide long river his mother didn't know where the basket would be found she sent her daughter to follow it as it floated away it was the Egyptian King's daughter who drew him out of the water the Egyptian King the Pharaoh had ordered that all Hebrew baby boys were to be thrown into the Nile and it was Pharaoh's daughter who drew him out of the water that is what Moses's name means drew him out of the water how have you been cast into the waters left to drown how have you been lost among the reeds caught in the perilous current of life how have you been abandoned 
thrust out of the safety of home Jesus says to you I will be with you I have been with you I will not leave you alone you are named Moses too you are the one I draw out of the water I will draw you out of the pit out of the miry clay and set your feet upon a rock you have been in the current of today's dangerous rapid waters call out to God for help allow him to draw you up from the soul numbing currents of busyness rush and self-dependence as you allow yourself to go to sleep give yourself to God's care become God dependent in this story of Moses we have a foreshadowing of what we gain in the waters of baptism the waters that are meant for death turn out to be instead cleansing healing waters yes our enemy prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour yes like the Egyptian king our enemy wants to drown you he wants you to be covered by the dangerous waters of life yet through this danger through these very same waters Jesus meets you he reaches out to rescue you he draws you out of death into new life allow these waters to wash you ending a day giving yourself to sleep resting in God's love this is sacred holy precious as you are being washed you are more and more free to be near God to enjoy his presence to trust in his watchful care rest sleep believe allowing these words deeper into your heart and mind I will be with you see the burning bush of God's presence speaking goodness into your heart rehearse this good news in your breath breathing in saying to your soul you are with me and then also breathing out pray meditate and trust saying again you are with me Moses's life had been strange messy and confusing when he came of age he began to sort out the things that mattered most to his life he understood in deeper ways that he was an alien and a stranger in the house of Pharaoh he was a Hebrew one of the oppressed benefiting from the riches of the oppressor was troubling how could he enjoy any good thing when his own people were enslaved working tirelessly for the brutal king of Egypt when he saw an Egyptian beating one of his Hebrew brothers one day he was given a chance to prove his identity as an Israelite 
in a fit of rage and vindication. He killed the Egyptian, hid the body in the sand, and then fled into the desert to hide from Pharaoh's wrath. Years later, Moses had married, raised a family, and was working for his father-in-law, Jethro, tending sheep on the backside of Mount Horeb. Moses was no doubt content to be removed and hidden from his previous life as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He had no expectation that God had any special plans for his life. He had no idea that his life was about to change. There on the backside of Mount Horeb, this was a wilderness place where God spoke to Moses in a burning bush. You likely have not experienced a literal burning bush, but you have had some kind of burning bush experience. This would be that turning point when you came to accept the truth of God in a way that changed the direction of your life. This would be a moment when he especially revealed himself through a person, an experience, maybe a worship service, a time when you were serving someone, perhaps a time of prayer, or even a powerful sermon. Something shifted inside of you, and you haven't been the same since. You might protest here, but I haven't taken God as seriously as I should. My life hasn't changed that much. I still struggle. I still don't know how to trust God with my life. I continue to resist Him each day. I live more through my strength than God's love. Moses protested too. He said, Who am I that you would speak to me? He worried about his weaknesses. I can't speak for you. I stutter when I open my mouth. Moses would drift away from God too. He would become impatient and angry with the people he was leading. He would continue to struggle with fear and doubt. Even still, God says to Moses, I will be with you. And God still says to you, I will be with you. No matter how much doubt or fear that stir inside of you, God still says, I will be with you. No matter how much stubbornness and anger, God still says, I will be with you. Once again, place yourself before the burning bush of God's presence. Rest. Sleep. Believe these words deeper into your heart and mind. I will be with you. Rehearse this good news in your breath. Breathing in, saying to your soul, My God is with me. And then also breathing out. Pray, meditate, and trust saying again, My God is with me. As we bring this meditation to a close, I invite you to consider one more part of Moses' story. God instructs Moses to say to Pharaoh, Let my people go. Moses fusses. But how can I go back? How can I speak for you? Why would the king of Egypt listen to me? God replies, 
tell Pharaoh that I am sent you I am the great I am is with you the great I am sends you he is the true true he is the real real God is being behind and before all other things he is the one by whom everything else in the universe was created he is the one in whom all things hold together and have their being the great I am says to you tonight I am with you I am the being who will always be with you in peace give yourself to sleep rest in God's faithfulness for he alone can make you dwell in safety may the Lord bless you and protect you as you sleep may his face shine upon you like the radiance of a burning bush may he be gracious and kind granting you deep healing sleep may you be filled with peace continue to allow yourself to let go of today by rehearsing in your breathing in and breathing out my God is with me my God is with me my God is with me amen